Hey everyone. So uh, the other night uh, I was joined by my friends uh, Tricker, Moose, Black Magic, Lumberhacks, and uh, we all decided to create this uh, DCS World module tier list. Now the idea was to represent the easiest modules to learn in DCS as a sort of infographic for new players. This is not a best module tier list. This is not a, this is my favorite module tier list. Uh, we're trying to leave all of that aside. The idea is to present the easiest modules for a new player to learn as a sort of infographic. In fact, the, the ranking for each of these has no relation onto how good the module is or uh, anything of that nature. It's, it's more how hard we believe um, the module is to learn as a new player. Now, the term new player is a relative term um, because a new player could be completely new to simming or they could have a huge background in simming and that makes a huge difference. The really important term in this infographic is the word beginner. Beginner means they have no prior experience and they're new to simming in general. Now, the criteria we looked at to uh, rank each one of these modules is uh, kind of as follows. Um, we looked at the startup, the taxi, the takeoff, the landing experience, uh, learning how to employ and use all weapons, and also uh, to use and understand at their fullest all of the sensors that are available to you in that airplane or helicopter or whatever. So when you form your own opinion based off of this video or uh, this infographic, keep that in mind. Now, there's no way for us to be 100% unbiased. It came up a couple times, um, and I think if you're watching this video, you'll realize we got into a couple arguments from time to time because of it. But we tried, and it was a three-hour discussion, and um, we did the best we could. So when you're looking at this list and uh, the discussion, please keep in mind and keep keep that in the back of your head that um, when you're forming your own opinion, um, you know, are you being biased? It's really hard to be. Most of you probably have a ton of experience in simming, um, and it's really hard to look back at your first experience and the first plane that you took off in or helicopter and how hard it was and how often you crashed it and how difficult it was to do task A or B. Um, it, it's tough. It's tough trying to forget all of that and look at it through the eyes of a new player. Also, when you're watching this or you're looking at the infographic, um, it's okay to disagree. I think it's very healthy um, if you don't agree with the decisions that we came up with. And that's what's great about it. Go ahead, disagree. Tell me in the comments below. I don't care. I'm not going to get offended. Um, there's no reason to get mad, upset, or act childish about it. It's just a list that we came up with. Um, you know, we try to be as honest as possible, and that's about it. It's all we can do. Anyway, I look forward to seeing your thoughts and comments below, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, well, uh, hit it, Jeeves. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! That was pretty damn good. Thank you. That was great. All right, so here's what we're going to do. On multiple occasions, Tricker and myself have noticed that uh, we get a lot of questions. What module should I buy? I'm just getting into DCS. What module should I buy? And uh, the answer is always, uh, well, that depends on what you want to do. <laughs> and then it gets more philosophical from that point. So uh, we decided it would be amazing to create this uh, hot tub tier list or just a tier list in general. But what, what better way than to represent tiers than with hot tubs? So um, over here, let me just show you the actual tiers without uh, the overlays on them. The very first tier this is going to be the trash tier okay obviously that is a hot tub nobody wants i don't know what kind of chemicals are going into it um we have this pot over here i'm guessing you boil the water in the pot and then feed it through these uh obviously the pink tubes are representing hot water uh and then you mix in regular water with this hose uh just in case it's too hot that would be my my thought process so that's the trash tier so you the, probably wouldn't see any bananas banana floats in that, no banana that floats in the trash tier and if you do they're deflated because they have holes in them and probably moldy that's a good point yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't 
I wouldn't put any one of my balls in that right there. I agree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the next tier we have is, uh, I think it's the F tier. Yeah. It's the F tier. Now, uh, the F tier is just kind of like an annoying one. Like nobody wants to show off of this thing, right? You don't, this, you don't go into, you don't go in your backyard and you go check out my hot tub. Right. And then this ends hooked up to a fire. <laughs> it's just kind of a hot tub that you have for yourself. Okay. Nobody else. It kind, of, it kind of looks like one of those things you put your feet in at the spa. It does, huh? It does. I, again, so, I don't think I put my balls in it after that. You know, I don't know if you'll, but I don't know if you'll be able to fit in that. Is that the scale? You know, what's funny is, um, I saw the picture of people in this one and I don't know if they were photoshopped in, but, uh, there were four people in it. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I'd imagine this is pretty big, but I still don't know that I'd go in it. Like if somebody went over to you, if you went over to your buddy's house and he was like, Hey, you want to get in my hot tub? And he showed you that the answer is going to be no. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't get it. It looks like it's made out of clay. Yeah. Or, or some sort of like, uh, polymer that has like a California state warning that says it's going to give you cancer. Yeah. It's, it's probably, it's a, it looks like this, the, it looks like what you would, you go to like, uh, El Torito and they mix your guacamole in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So the next tier. Now I know that everybody's going to say this is the best tier because of Twitch. This is the inflatable tier. This is the D tier. Nice. No coincidence at all in the name. Uh, now, while it's appropriate for Twitch, I don't know that this is the best. This isn't the best tier. You know what I mean? This is slightly better. Like, again, I don't go to my friend's house and uh, he shows me his inflatable hot tub. It's not not really my size, you know? Not for me. It's It's fine for Twitch and streaming. Oh, you're right. This is the E tier, not the D tier. I'm, I don't know how to letters, guys. What would you do if you actually went to your buddy's house and, and he walked like, in his living room and there was actually a hot tub like that there? Would you ask me, like, do you stream on Twitch? Oh, yeah. That would be 100% my first question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, don't even, I don't even know what to ask. The, the, question, the, next, the, the question I think you want to ask is, is that for you on Twitch or your wife? That's a good point. Right? Good point. And I think the only appropriate answer from your buddy is me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we have the D tier. Um, this is kind of, again, you know, it's, it's nice to have for yourself. It's, it looks like a two person, you know, it's the two person one. You know what we should do? You know what we should do? We should add chat to this. Hold on a second. We're doing we're doing it live. Let's get stream chat up in here. That way the people the people watching this afterwards can enjoy all of the silly what, bullshit. What everybody else is saying. That everybody else is saying. How about that? I'm sure it'll be hard to read. We can throw a we can throw a little a little color source behind it. And now we're talking. Oh man, look at that! Beautiful. The people have a voice. They have a voice. You guys, people can you guys see. have a voice. That's right. There we go. Look at that professional quality. Look at that. I'm digging. I'm digging this even more. Jeez, it's like I know what I'm doing sometimes. Let's add a little. Add a, a little, little flare. Uh, little flare to it. Let's do uh Oh yeah. Do some opacity. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh man, look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. All right. Now you guys are now you guys are on YouTube. So yeah, this is you know it's a two person. This is kind of like the tub you buy for you and your wife. You're not sharing it with anybody else. You I like how there's I mean? only one towel. There's yeah, because most of the time only one person can fit in it. Yeah, you know that's true. Anybody who's like weighs more than like 120 pounds probably overflows that thing. There's some nice plants next to it, though. Yeah, they probably get watered every time somebody sits in it. That's true. I mean, they look fake, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because if you water it with scalding hot water, it just dies. 
All right, so next we have, uh, what tier is this? This is the C tier. Of the C tier. The C tier is a nice, a nice mediocre hot tub, you know? This is the one is most made people of, can... Is uh, it of <laughs> It might be. <laughs> this is the tier that most people can afford, you know? Most people have who have a, who have a hot tub. You can bring your friends over. Still not the best experience, but, you know, it's a good one. We have the we have the B tier. B tier is nice. Got some lights. Look at those lights, man. Fucking amazing. I bet you it looks amazing at nighttime. You know what I mean? Oh man. It looks like it even has massagers on it. Yeah, it might even have like extra jets to massage your or back. Look at it's you can see it. Jet. You can see it faintly, but there's like a there's like three jets that pour out the top, kind of like a get your neck if you're sitting here, you know? Ooh. Look at that. A little fancy. Neck massage. Neck massaging. And then uh the next one we have <laughs> the prostate jets <laughs> uh this is this is pretty high level right here this oh is, wow this is the a tier uh this one comes with the booze and you can only sit in it with your friends who are male or your friends who are female if you're a female okay this is not a uh co-ed kind of hot tub is it's just not possible i mean if you want to be the upper echelon of hot tubs only dudes or only females no mixing. No, only jets from the 80s go yes. into this category. Yes. And it's also, it's made of wood for the wood inside it. Nice. Okay. And uh, on top of that, it's also, the water has to resemble urine. It's, yeah, it looks uh, kind of mucky. Yeah, it's not something that you want to look clean. You know what I mean? And, and maybe it was when we started, but, you know, with all that alcohol and everybody sitting in it, it's going to turn yellow at some point. Maybe it's filled with beer. It might be. It might be. You, you can have whiskey or you can drink straight from the hot tub. One or the other. <laughs> that would be the grossest thing ever. <laughs> Hang on while I get a drink. That's right. Just you just dip under. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little that'd be a little concerning. It would be. Uh the next the next and the final tier is the S tier. Uh basically, what's better than having water floating on water? You know what I mean? And on top of that, the water is hotter on top of the water. And it looks like it's like a little yacht. It or is. A boat. It is a boat hot tub. Nothing gets better than a boat full of water that you're sitting in on top of the freezing cold water in the ocean. I agree. You know what I mean? That is that is nice. That is the upper echelon. This is the god tier of hot tub tiers. All right. I'm digging it. So that's what we got. S through F and trash. So I think what we'll do is uh, let's start with trainers. We'll go right to left here. Makes sense. So, All right. um, you know, if you don't know how to fly in DCS or in general, a good way to start is to get a trainer. If you're a little bit worried about all the other shit that goes on in DCS, you know, everybody who starts flying starts in a training aircraft of some sort. So we'll start with the trainers. And I think we start with, uh, I think we start on the bottom with the L39. Are you familiar with the L39 tricker? Yeah, I've flown it a couple times and I've had the pleasure of fighting against it on the Cold War server. Did you die? I did. You did die? That's like, yeah. That's like S tier quality right there. Right off the that's bat. That's like, um, well, if you try to rate fight an L39, you're going to lose in an F5. Okay. I found out the hard way. What about a MiG-21? Probably the same. Uh, probably the same. It doesn't have the, same the power game. though. Yeah, it doesn't have power. No power. The graphics the graphics are kind of old school, so I don't know how you want to look at it that way. Like do you want to incorporate I think easy, like the whole package? We can do that, you know, uh the whole package, but but primarily what's easiest to learn. But but it does include the whole package, you know. If if you're gonna learn a system that one that has like multiple systems versus one that doesn't, it's uh you you're gonna you're gonna have to account for that. Yeah. Okay. So well, L39, L39 is super easy to start up. Okay. And it's super easy to fly, I think. I know how to start it up with Windows Key Home. Yeah. Yeah. I There's not much. Start it the right way. You turn on the battery, the APU, That's the it. engine, and uh, you just start taxiing. Power I think fuel. It's, That's it. Yeah, I think it's pretty I think it's pretty easy, the L39. Nice. Nice. Okay. So that puts um, it that puts it at least C or above, I'm guessing. Well, before we get started, like, oh, well, not before we get started, but what are the other trainers? Like, it's kind of hard to see them on we the have, right. We have the CE2. 
We have the C101, and we have the Yak-52. But they don't have to be... They don't have to necessarily compete with each other. So you wouldn't, like, say, since we rate the L39 as an A tier, the C101 has to be B or B because I don't think it's any better. They can live on the same tier. Okay. All right? So they're not competing against each other. They're just going into a list. Hey, Gordo, thanks for the uh, thanks for the gift subs, man. If you got a gift sub from Gordo, make sure you give him a thank you. All I'm right, so... I'm thinking, that, I'm thinking it's, like, B or A. Yeah, I was thinking A... So, A or B? A or B? I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking A. It's a. You know. It's. It's. It's not hard to land. It's not hard to take off in. It's easy to start. You know. It's a. It's a little. I would say it's tough, because the roll rate is so high, and so you really got to have some precision when flying it. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. I. I would say A. That was my okay. gut. All right. Intuition was A for the L30. Glad we're just on because same, same page. It's easy to start up, it's easy to fly, and it's easy to land. I agree. Taxiing might be a different story. Taxiing is a little it's tough. An easy, it's an easy module to learn. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. The CE2. Now, the CE2 is a little different because the CE2 is not really a trainer, it's more of an acrobatic plane. But we're putting in this category nonetheless. Well, if it, <laughs> all right, so easiest module to learn, uh, or easiest modules for beginners, CE2, I would probably put A as well, because there's nothing easier than starting there, up. There a, isn't. There's like two or three switches, and then you, there's nothing else to do. You can't really mess it up. That's true. It's true. You can't like, mess it up. The, the trash can came into my head, but if we're going off of easiest <laughs> modules to learn, for beginners yeah we'll have, have to say we'll have, have to, to have another a. list and we can definitely slap it in the trash can for that one <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll have to go with a you going a with that one too I'll, i don't know what you i mean what, agree what you, with what you on that I, I think you're right i think uh i'm trying to think of some cons on this one as far as like easiest to learn i think the, i think the cons would be um you really have like all or nothing as far as power but even then, it's still easy, right? I, I'll, I'll go back to that all or nothing power with the C one hundred and one because that that things that I think we're we're we'll get down that path. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you with the A. Well, the chat brings up a good point. They say it's a tail wheel. Oh, it is a tail wheel. And That's a good point. Tail is a little hard to land. It is. This this particular one does bounce if you're not on top of your tail wheel skills, and the tail wheel does require. Uh, some extra skills. So if you're not versed in World War II stuff to begin with, like let's say you don't play IL-2, yeah, maybe the tail wheel puts it down a notch. So we're just thinking B for the, yeah, for the Christian Eagle? I think I think so. I think I think it has to go down a notch for, the, for that. Good job, chat. Yeah, the chat's saying that it's, it's hard to taxi, but the Christian Eagle 2 is actually like very simple to taxi, in yeah, my opinion. You just use the brakes. It's super simple. Um, it's not like a World War II no, tail dragger. No, it's not. Not. Hey, Roundabout, thanks for the uh, Tier 1 sub there, man. Appreciate that. See, because of the landing wheel stuff, it's not that hard. Give Like, for, for other stuff, it's so much easier. Like, like compared to all the tail wheels here in the World War II category, way easier. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go any lower because it's it's the simplest airplane to start up. It, you, you just turn a switch and it turns on. And once you get airborne, there's nothing to it. Like, it's just, it's super easy to fly. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So. That said, I, I don't. I think, I think I think B is good. That said, I don't think I'd recommend it to a beginner who's trying to get into DCS world. But I guess that's a totally different subject. That is. I say we move on to the next. All right. The C-101. The next, the next step jet. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. I don't like the C-101. <laughs> I, I think it's a pain in the ass to fly. The engine management is a pain in the ass. It doesn't go fast at all. It's kind of a pain to land because of that. I don't have much experience in it. Um, just because I didn't like it. Kind of like you. Yeah. I'm I'm not a huge fan of it. And I don't like to let that sway it. But I'm not a huge fan of it just because it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, I don't have enough experience 
to rate it on easy modules, but I it's just not one of my type of airplanes to fly. Yeah, this one's going down for me into D. I'm putting this one in the D. It's I would so say once it's in the air, it's like easy to fly, like rolling around, doing everything, lining up for, for everything's like easy to fly, but it's a pain in the ass to get up in the air. And then it just has no power once it's in the air. So if you screw up, you're done. And then and then on top of that, the engine overheats. You can't be at full throttle all the time. The engine overheats real quick. And when you do that, you're done too. It's multi-crew too, right? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't I thought, remember maybe, either. Um, I was going to say it belongs in the D category because that's the dual hot tub, you know, for two people. Oh, yeah. that That's like perfect, man some good thinking i'm gonna leave it there i think i think that's where it's where it's going it is yeah. multi-crew we're, we're being told it is multi-crew okay i was pretty sure it was multi-crew yeah i just yeah. remember i just remember shooting it down quite a bit on the cold war server well it's because it doesn't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> that's because you get behind it and the guy's like well if i maneuver right now to get out of the way i am going to fall to the floor yeah, so it just I, lets you it just lets you shoot it i think we're off to a solid start i though. think so too I think so too. All right. The yak 52. I'm actually really glad chat says opposite of me for some things. Cause I like, I like that there's controversy here. Yeah. So the yak 52, um, I have a little bit of experience with this one. Uh, I think it's, I think it flies really well. Um, it is not a tailwheel. So that's a bonus. It is a prop. It is a prop. So there's a little bit of engine management there. It is an aerobatics plane. It does pretty well with the aerobatic stuff. I'd say this one was was an a C or I, above for I, me. I, I was about to say I feel like you're thinking C. I am thinking I was, C only because I was thinking C as well. Only because there is a lot of rudder work you got to do with this one. Um, you know, not so much the L39, not so much the the CE2. I guess if you're doing the aerobatics, you would with the CE2, but but you kind of need it for sure for the yak. Yeah, I, I think, I'm, I'm going to go C on that one. Yeah, I like the C as well. I mean, I think we're off to a good start because easiest modules to learn. All these don't require a lot of skill to start up. Agreed. Except for maybe the C101. You got to do a little bit yeah. of work there. Yeah. All right. I don't really fly that one that much, though. Let's work with, uh, let's work with the helicopters next. Ooh. Well, it looks like I showed up right on time. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Now we have our resident... Uh, expert of helicopters, Moose. Well, we got to explain what's going on. Does he have the stream up? You got to get the stream up, Moose? I have the stream up, Moose. Uh, all right. Perfect. So we're we're rating these easiest modules for beginners. So it's kind of the whole package. The systems, the flight model, what's required to fly them, landing, takeoff, flying it in general, uh, weapons employment if it's, you know, a thing. It's, it's the whole package. We've done the the, uh, the trainer tier. And uh, you can see on there, I don't know if you agree or not with us on that. I don't know if you own those modules or have tried them. But that's where we're at on those. Yeah, no, I'd say I, I'd agree with those. Sounds good. All right, so let's start with uh, with the Gazelle. Let's start with the L model. Now, this is the, I believe this is the Gunner model. Oof. Yeah, because we have the M. The M is the... Uh, the one that shoots the, the four missiles, so, air to ground targets. I think the first question on the Gazelle is, how good are you at controlling an uncontrollable helicopter? Oh, I'm super good at the Gazelle. Are you? Yeah, I fly the Gazelle all the time. I fucking love it. Oh, okay. It's, 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 and I'm going to take a bunch of shit for this. It's one of my favorite helicopters to fly, but only the M model. I don't really care for the L, just because of the way air to ground works in DCS and the you get sniped super easy. Uh, the Mistral, I've never really gotten into. I know Gatto likes it, and a lot of multiplayer guys like it because you can shoot down other uh, other airplanes and shit. Yeah. But the M model is where it's at for me because it feels like you're a little sniper. You got to hide behind a fucking tree or a building. You pop up, shoot it. it that, that one's fun for me. But that said, the flight model is pretty gamey. It feels, yeah. it feels pretty gamey to me. Now, I've never been in a in a gazelle so uh i don't really know if it's accurate or not but uh from the word around the the word around the streets is that it's it's got some issues and it needs to be fixed and i think even polychop has brought that up yeah but the 
main focus is easiest modules for beginners. So yep. I don't think the Gazelle, I honestly, out of all the helicopters, think the Gazelle is going to be one of the hardest to learn. I agree. I think the Gazelle's got the issues where you have to mess with your curves a lot when you're uh, setting it up, you know, in your bindings so that it doesn't fly completely erratically everywhere. Super twitchy. Yeah. It's super twitchy. Yeah. I agree. So I'm I'm thinking like, man, we might even have to stick this in like the E or the F category. I don't think it's trash. I don't think it's complete trash. Maybe the L's trash. I think the L's trash. I don't give a shit about the L. This this one's a pain in the, the you know why the L's trash? The L's trash because it's hard to learn, because it's twitchy, and then it's just not fun because the air to ground troops and shit shoot you real quick. So it's it's not a fun module. Yeah, but we're we're basing it on easiest module now. Well, I would say it fun. was pretty fucking hard to play it when you get shot down all the time. Well, I guess you're right. I was gonna say, <laughs> don't you think it would be easier to shoot guns and rockets than the hot missiles? Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, we'll move it up one. We'll move it up one. I'm not defending it, just no. Nah, I think I think you got a good point. I think you got a point. I think everybody in chat just wants to see something in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> everybody I mean, was like oh yeah, like, ah. it's fucking trash here <laughs> it's the only helicopter i don't like okay okay do you do you fly it even though you don't like it no never what about you moose no, i think i've probably spent maybe five hours in that aircraft okay all right well i'm gonna go with uh only because it's a little bit easier than the mr i don't know i don't know i think i think i'm just gonna slap both of these down here in e a little bit easier to have more fun uh for beginners in in it but not much we'll go with we'll go with e tier i just i don't think the gazelle is that easy to learn that's i agree with you that's my uh my thought on it even though i haven't flown it that much i just i remember it was a huge pain in the ass should have called chuck's this guy had really helped me out there yes what, what was the systems were hard to learn is that what we're getting at yeah, I think it was just the systems and then the flight model. The flight model really screws it. It makes it really hard because you have to and go in and tweak it a bunch. And it's the weird thing about the Gazelle is like you get into a hover and then you have to switch to side seat to do the other systems, right? Like that's kind of yes, different just, than... That is true. Just, just put it from this perspective. Let's say like you don't own any helicopters and you bought the Gazelle. Like how easy would it be to fly the Gazelle if you know if you have no helicopter experience? Yeah, that'd be not as easy. Yeah, not that easy. I agree. That's that's why I'm thinking it's got to be in the F or trash category. And that's just me. All right, we'll compromise. We'll throw them all down here. I think that's good. All right, KA-50. Yeah, easy to fly for sure. The thing flies itself. Definitely easy to fly. The systems, the startup is a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. The startup, it takes a hot minute. The weapons, the weapons are good. They're not too hard to employ. Uh, like any helicopter, I would say, I would say the only thing that's different about it helicopter wise is you got to watch your speed, not because of, uh, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Where one, one side lifts and the other side goes down. Yeah, the symmetry of lift or the uh, retreating blade stall. Retreating thing. blade stall. You won't get into that, but you're but the, because the the two blades are on top of each other. Uh, you'll end up slapping them together. Yeah, I mean, my personally myself, I thought the KU fifty took me a little bit of time to get used to with the automation. Like I really had to understand like the trim system. Oh yeah, the uh, the authority is only like ten percent of everything. Yeah, like the just the trim systems and the autopilot functions. Like it took me a little bit of time to get used to it, so I don't. I don't think it would be a very easy. I'm thinking it's like E. Really, that far down? Huh? I think so. I mean, because it is. There's a lot to learn with the K50, but it's not there, hard to fly. There is, but <clears throat> also, like the A10, you don't have to learn all the in-depth stuff to it, and you can still use it and have fun with it. But I'd agree. No, you're you're right. Um, just as the easiest module, I don't think it's an easy module because of the automation and the trim system. Gotcha. Mm. But what about the rest of it? So, like, trim and automation aside, fairly easy to to, to fly. Otherwise, 
I agree. The weapons employment, not too bad. I was just throwing out my my two cents. I gotcha. I gotcha. I think I'm gonna slap it in D. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the D. You I think, think it's you think E? What do you think, Moose? I'm I'm gonna give it D or E. I mean I don't I really didn't find it too too hard. Like I felt like the startup procedure trying to do it manually was the hardest part. I mean maybe it's because I'm a fixed wing guy. Like it might be. It like might I be. Under, I understand helicopters and mm. the not like but I just I feel like helicopters are harder to fly than fixed wing and maybe that's because I'm biased and I have that experience. Okay, no, absolutely. Fixed wing, fixed wing bias over here. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we got to look at it from a beginner's perspective. I do. I, I would, I'm just messing with you. I would argue that it's harder to pick up the Huey into a hover than it is the KF50. Oh, hands down. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I'm going to leave it in D. I'm going to leave it in the D. Yeah, I think because it's so easy to fly, to me, D. The systems, yeah, it's pretty in-depth. Yeah, we uh, Scout brings up a good point. The Abris is quite the learning curve. I don't think anybody I, can tell you how the Abris works. I think D is good. Okay. How about the MI-8? I would say the MI-8 startup is nasty. It's a long startup. Uh, flying it's not too bad, although landing it, I've I personally find it to be a little tough to land just because it enters vrs pretty easy um it doesn't slow down so fast you can't throw it around very much because it'll snap the fucking tail off and and don't be like me and be used to american helicopters and smash left pedal on takeoff and start spinning around because yeah, it's uh... go the opposite on that one huh <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm down at like d for this one i am too and and yeah, the startup's a bitch. I'm thinking E because just because of the startup, flying it is easy, but coming into land, I would say um, landing like, like you is said. a pain in the ass in that thing. Yeah, yeah, and and lumber makes a good point. There's a lot of weird quirks to the flight model, which may not be so quirky for a new person who's never flown it before or another helicopter. Just because maybe they're gonna have to learn it anyway, no matter what module, like the quirks themselves. But it, the quirks are definitely different from other helicopters. Now, it's been a while since I've been up in the MI8, but one thing I remembered is the retreating blade stall seemed way pronounced in this one versus the rest of them when you I start getting it's... fast. I've never actually That's... gotten into it in the MI8, only the gazelle. That's what I was thinking. E, uh, for the MI8, sorry, okay. the Mi8. The Mi8, I can but... get along with that one. How about you, Moose? You good with that? Yeah. I mean, I haven't had the landing issues, but I guess if the startup you're, you're is consideration. You're a helicopter yeah. pilot, dude. I know. I know. And that's the difference. So <laughs> like, if, people, if people are flying it and have the experience, then yeah, it might not yeah. be as difficult, but still, it's, yeah. All right. So uh, out, of, out of all of them, before we move yeah, on, yeah, yeah. which is the easiest to hover without auto hover? The KA-50 for sure for me. Yeah. Just because there's no anti-torque required. Yep. And I think that's a good... That's a good reason. I think it's a good reason, though. How about the Huey? We're going to so get... Huey, a, if we put, the, the, if we put the Huey is... anywhere below B, I think people are going to get mad. That said, we have a job to do. This but it's not a this is son. and this is not a value <laughs> estimator. This is easy that's estimator. Right. That's right. But it's easy, and I'm thinking it's got to be B or C, just because it's easy to start... I it's think it's easier to, to fly. Hovering is harder in the Huey, but landing and taking off and systems wise, there's no systems. And plus you can go gun everybody. I just oh, well, you don't even have to worry about the guns. You can enable the the AI exactly. and you can just fly around and not have to worry about gunning people too, which is nice. Plus you get multi crew. So you can have somebody in there in, in the second seat telling you what to do. Yeah, I'm I was thinking B or C for the Huey. Yeah, I, I would say if people have no experience at all, I'd, I'd be comfortable with a C because it is hard to get used to the dynamics, what's going on with the flight characteristics. Because the Huey, to me, is very well modeled to what really happens. But other than that, it's super easy, super fun. Yeah, and if anybody's watching this and you get the Huey, just just remember the engine temps. You gotta, you, gotta, you can't go fucking full collective all the time. That's a, That's one thing that they've introduced in the not too distant past that I think has screwed a lot of people. It's a basic helicopter and acts as such, as Lumber puts it. That's a good way to put it. It is. So basic for B. Basic for B. 
We'll move or it B up. for basic. B for basic. <laughs> it's the basic bitch of all helicopters. Yeah. That one has the massage jets in it. <laughs> That's right. What does the S in this category stand for? God like tier. Superb. Oh, okay. It's it's the it's the it's the jacuzzi or the hot tub in a boat on the water tier. In, in case here you go. Just so in case you missed it, it was the hot tub that is on a boat, and the boat's purpose is to be a hot tub on the water, and that is it. It's That's the god awesome. tier of fucking hot tubs. That's got to be a very buoyant craft, yes. for sure. Agreed. <laughs> the I S, like th the S tier is the sex tier. <laughs> but we're we're gonna be doing more. Uh, I don't know if you talked about jabbers, like different categories, like later instead of easiest modules, like more fun modules. And we're yeah, we might everything. do we might do like. We might just take, you know, the air to air aircraft, anything that just does air to air and rank them. Or we might do only whatever does air to ground. So like the multi rolls and the air to ground, uh, the strike aircraft, and we'll, we'll rank, we'll rank them amongst themselves only. And we'll, we'll come up with a bunch of stuff. We'll do like, um, most regrettable purchases modules, you know, um, things like that. Gazelle. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, Hot. I gotta just put my two cents here. K50 MI8, right? So I really feel like. Are we comfortable with D and E? I should be reversed because MIA is hard startup, but you know, like the K fifty has hard startup and hard systems. Are we good? Are we good with where they're at? I can see where you're where you're yeah, going. I, I could I can get on board with that. You want to swap them? You think they're swappable? I do. I really haven't had that much trouble with the flight model on the MIA. I know the K-50 is really easy to fly, but I think the systems on the K-50 might make it a little bit more difficult for somebody that's just starting out. That's true, because it's more like, it's kind of like Gen 4 versus Gen 3 technology. Yeah. You know, it's, it's easier because you, you literally have a gun sight and you shoot versus you have sensors that you're going to have to put on target. So the, the Mi-8 is VHS and the K-50 is DVD. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then the Huey is, you know, the Blu-ray. It's the fucking eight, the eight track. It's the blue. It's the Blu-ray that only plays VHS videos. All right, should we move to World War Two? Yes. All right. So um, we'll go top to bottom on this one. How about that? Oh, okay. Okay. We'll switch it. We'll switch it up a little. So we got the mm. we got the Spitfire. Oh, Don Spitfire. Oh, Don. So uh, my two cents on the Spitfire is it is a pain in the ass to taxi. It is a pain in the ass to manage the engines. It's a pain in the ass to land. It's easy enough to fly. It's a pain in the ass to aim because the fucking engine cowling it, is it so is. big. If you're shooting a target, it is you can't see your target when you shoot in a turn. One thing uh, I will say, though, I agree with everything you said, but one thing I'll say is online... The Spitfire is the most popular module to be flying. So obviously something... That's like saying if the tornado was brought to DCS, the tornado oh, would God. be the most popular That's true. piece of trash well, in the sky. It's also what I mean? British. Yeah. I'm gonna, good point, good point. I'm going to get so many unsubs on YouTube for it's... that comment. <laughs> Anybody who's from, the fucking, from fucking Britain is going to be like, well, I'm never following Jabbers. Fuck this guy. Yeah. He's not going to rate the Eurofighter. No. no. Actually, I think it'd be like, right, I'm never going to fucking follow Jebba's <laughs> Ben. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're totally right, though. It's hard to taxi. Uh, yeah. The, startup, the startup's okay. Startup's pretty taking easy. Off, taking off is uh, kind of a chore. We're kind of going to have the taking off factor for most of these World War II planes because they're all tail, tail draggers for the most part. Some of them are easier than True. others, but they are. they all kind of require a little finesse on takeoff and landing but the but the crappy thing about the spitfire is the landing if you're not perfectly centered and you move left or right on landing and you don't three point it you're gonna tip it over on a wing i honestly feel like the spitfire is definitely going to be harder than the p51 for sure yeah, i so. agree i think uh spitfire is like e or f for me as far as yeah yeah i was thinking d or e for sure Especially oh, since it's a tail dragger. I'm gonna get a special guest in here who's uh who's who's the warbird expert in my opinion. Let me let me get him in here. Hey everyone, Wags here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sit down, Wags. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Now Wags is going to unfollow me. Damn it. Oh, well, I, I didn't mean it like that. I'm, I'm just kidding. All right. May I present... Hey, everyone. Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. <laughs> May I present Lumber Hacks. Oh, God. Lumber, Lumber Hacks uh, is going to join us for the World War II bit because uh, Lumber Hacks has a little bit of experience in the World War II stuff. Just a little. Yeah. Spitfire definitely is fucking... It's really light on pitch. Shit on roll. If you don't know how to lock the tail wheel, you're going to die. I'm going F. I'm going F with this one. I wouldn't say it's yeah, trash because it's, it's a great module. Uh, but it, but it's it's not easy. No, it's not an easy airplane. We good with F? Yeah. <laughs> it right. killed a lot of real people too. So <laughs> There you go. All right. So we're going to do the P-51 uh, 25NA. We'll do the 30NA. They're going to basically be in the same spot. But I would put them, put them both in here just because. Um, and Lumber, you have to reserve your bias here. Uh, for, but I started with the P fifty one. Well, that's fine. But you gotta you gotta reserve your 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 bias and love for the P fifty one, and just think of the beginners. So I'm a little disappointed that you do not have the TF fifty one, the free module. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, right. Yeah, I'm very disappointed. Should we add it in here real fast? It's oh, not. It's check not a real cookie, fast thing. Uh oh, it's not a real fast thing. We'll we'll just assume that the TF is in the same category. It I just think they're all gonna shoot. go in the same. Yeah. So uh, again, tailwheel, not so tough to take off. I I started with this one in DCS World in VR, and uh, it was it took me quite a while to learn to take off in it. But once it's in the air, not so bad. And then landing, like any tailwheel, a little difficult. But uh, what else is there? There's a little bit of engine management in this one that you have to you have to be pay attention to. You don't want to overheat it. You can't just go, you know, full balls pitch. to the wall. Yeah, you can't just push the engine to its limit it'll blow up um Back. Back. i feel like the disclaimer for these world war ii birds is this is not relative to the other categories these are already harder yeah yeah these are within themselves these are these are, these are tiered within themselves well they're they're all gonna require more engine management more trim all like all of them yeah and they're all tail draggers so i would put everything like under d for one or two maybe, modules maybe c there's a couple that are easier than others there is um Hadrian, pull the stick back i agree but before the continuity of the chart i do agree with what he's saying it needs to be above average yeah agreed difficulty pete hasler the supercharger is automatic on the p51 that is true i'm, in, I'm going with like d on this one what do you guys think I'd say C personally, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Because well, the Mustang, you when you're taking off, you can pull the stick back. It locks the tail wheel. That's yeah. true. I would be okay uh, with C with the Mustang as, as well. It's very light on the controls. It doesn't do a lot of weird things. Do they all do that little snap if you pull too hard, though? Uh, wing drops. It just depends on the airfoil. What do you think, Tricker? Where are you at? I, like I think all of them belong under D. Like all <laughs> just because like, you suck D, in your sub or D or below. D your below. airplane flies for you. No, it's just uh, <laughs> if you're just if you're uh, brand new to the the sim and you get in the TF fifty one and you get it for free and you try to take off for your first time with takeoff uh, assistance all the way at zero. Do you think you can actually? Do you remember your first takeoff? Like in the World War Two planes. Everybody, yeah, everybody hard. remembers their first take. That was well yeah. after flying DCS for a while. And it, it was that's why. That's why I think it's going to be deer below. But mine was like 13 years ago, so it's hard. Make it a D. It's a hard D. Right, uh, okay, I'll go, I'll go with D. I'm going to stick the uh, the 30 NA in the same category, just because there's not much difference between them. Not that it's I'm all the jets. Of. Like, because we're going with easiest modules, and yeah. all yeah. the jets are so easy compared, like to fly. Compared. But then you have to add the systems onto them. So there's no system management with the World War II stuff. It's an overall it's, process. It is. And that's why we're duking it out right now. I agree. Yep. All right. So, but I agree uh, though. Even with the lack of the systems, they are they yeah, are tough. They are tough. 
let's talk about the P47. Now, I have zero experience with the P47. As an echo, because you have to, for sure, you have to know power, mixture, propeller, and turbo, and they're all have to be manually moved. This is with the P47? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking E or F for the P47. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt out on ranking this one because I have zero experience with it. Same. So like, opting just like out. Lumber, Lumber said, just like Lumber said, the, the startup is a long process. Uh -huh. um, taxiing is not easy, but it, I think it's easier than the Spitfire. What about landing? Um, landing, I, th I find very easy, but the engine management is a huge pain in the butt because you have the turbocharger and what is it called, Lumber? There's two turbos, isn't there? Yeah, well, it has a turbocharger and a supercharger, but the supercharger is all automatic. The turbo okay. is the only one you're controlling. I'm thinking E. E? Is just because I think it's easier to land and taxi compared to the Spitfire. But there is a lot more engine management required in the P47. Plus, you have the cow flaps. What did you say, Lumber? There's cow flaps, there's oil cooler flaps, there's intercooler flaps. <laughs> there's the turbo the power the prop the mixture so coming from somebody who's not flown it offering a fresh perspective for the point of this survey all those things do you have to do them to operate the aircraft because i know there's like scoops and flaps and things on aircraft that i never fuck with and i fly just fine just to, like get it in and fly it do you really do you really you, fly just fine if you get in the p47 and you go full power and you take off within 10 seconds your engine's gonna quit Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah, if you don't have, like, the cowl flaps in the right position and stuff. See, the Mustang, that's the other thing against the Mustang. All of the radiators are automatic. Yeah. And you still have to manage them, though. Yeah, well, that's just because DCS sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Way to say that when we're doing a DCS-specific survey. That's two strikes on the stream so far. That's two on, strikes man. on the stream so far. I was waiting for Who Trigger. Who brought this on here? I was, I was waiting for Tricker to throw the, hey... Wags here from Equal Dynamics. After that one. <laughs> I was like, here it comes. <laughs> All right, let's do the uh, FW one ninety D nine, and I'm assuming uh, that the A eight's fairly similar. What's the difference between them? Do we know? Uh, the D nine has a inline six or inline twelve inverted inline twelve, and the D nine is it D nine? I can't remember. D nine A eight. A8, the Anton has a BMW radial. Okay. Oh, so basically, that, the, no the D9 is more air to air and the A8 is more air to ground from what I got. I see. All right. And so we'll do the D9 first. I'm assuming they're going to go in the same spot, but let's do the D9. I was going to, I was going to throw all the German planes into D with the Mustang. You've been flying them yeah. a lot lately, so. I wouldn't, yeah. They're super easy to start. Uh, super easy to take off, fly. Uh, I mean, for a tail dragger, maybe I don't know. Like I, I stuck with the D or below just because it's a tail dragger. You, you want to say that you stuck with the D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you think, Lumber? Would you go C or D with the the German airplanes? I keep them with the Mustang because I find that the Mustang's easier to fly than the Germans. I okay. I think that um, you know, as far as the 190s go, I I found them to be. Well, I I only flew the the first one that came out, so not the Anton. The Anton's the new one, right? Yeah. New. So, the, so the D yeah, new in quotes. The D nine <laughs> I found to be um very similar to the Mustang as far as how it flies. Yeah, they basically do the same thing too. Stick yeah. forward unlocks the tail wheel, stick back, locks the tail wheel. Right. Okay. They have very we'll similar see. performance together. And they both kind of fly the same. Again, I don't have the A eight, so that's why I bring you guys in here. Yeah, I think the D9 was more of a high altitude interceptor and the A8 was a bomber killer. Gotcha. All right, let's move on to the BF109, everybody's favorite German plane. I'm now, still going to throw it into the D category. This yeah. one's going to the D? Yeah. yeah it's like, I'd like to have more transparency between them all because we have a lot of them in the D category. There's, there's a lot of stuff in the D category right you now. You have like a D1, D2, D3. D3. <laughs> This is supposed to be a two-person hot tub, and we got a lot of we got a lot of people in this hot tub, man. Planes in here. Would, would let me ask you this: If we were to rank them against themselves, all these ones in the D category, would you put any of them higher or lower? Mustang. 
<laughs> Mustang, definitely the easier. But F109, since I've been flying that recently, Tricker says it's easy to take off, man. But <laughs> I, it's a struggle it's for just me. It's a I'm lot of right rudder, right? Yeah, a lot of right rudder and trying to mess with that RPM thing. I think once I get it down, I'll get I, it. But I think because of that, if, if you guys are going to rank them above themselves and one's easier than the other individually against themselves, I think you throw these ones up here. Do you not agree? I don't know. I agree. I, I, I can agree on that. Because I do agree, the, the 109 takes you by surprise on takeoff with how much right rudder you need. To the point where, like, you don't even go full power, right? If yeah, you don't, if you don't go full power, no. Yeah, which is kind of a weird thing for a new person. I agree. All right, how about the I-16? Do I just put that where it goes? Yeah. <laughs> I've never put, even it, touched put it right in the trash. So here's my problem with the I-16. Um... My one and only biggest problem is the landing gear. Like, I feel like I felt like an idiot trying to fucking figure out how that landing gear works. <laughs> you, know, you have to unlock oh. it. You have to rotate the fucking thing for like 12 hours until it goes up. And then you have to lock it again. And then when you're coming in, you have to unlock it and rotate it the other way for another 12 hours. So you like really have to pre-plan your landings. Wildcat had manual gear too. It's like 42 cranks. Jesus. I only flew the I-16 a couple times. I think it's a yeah. fine module. I just don't think it's easy. Yeah. I just... I mean, it's a light airplane with a huge engine. And trying to taxi was kind of a pain. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Looking at the chat, man, I'm just going to reiterate. Each one of these columns, you just imagine that they're all individually ranked against themselves. Yeah. We're not ranking... It's... Yeah, we're not ranking these against these other ones. It's just literally this, easiest modules for beginners, and then World War II. So think of it that way. You guys, you guys in chat keep thinking like, oh, this is my favorite module. It goes in S tier. It's not, it's not about that. It's, it's the easiest modules for beginners. And I think all World War II stuff is just not easy, period, to begin with. There's a lot of stuff going against it. Think about yeah. the first time you played any World War II stuff. How many times did you crash just trying to take off or land or do anything? <laughs> and I mean, it's time. actually reminiscent and reality too a lot of dudes yeah exactly doing ground looping exactly planes have planes have progressed a lot since then to make sure the pilots don't die on takeoff <laughs> i think i've seen more people on the ground just like lumber said die from ground looping oh 100 Sp spinning on the ground or scraping their wings or than having people I... dying in the in the in flight i've done it a ton of times or tapping the brakes too hard when you line up after that whole startup and your fucking prop is like bonk on the ground. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck. That's why, I, that's why I thought all of them deserve to be under D. But I can agree with the P-51 being at C, though. I think it's a little easier. And this might be a, a regional bias a little bit. Like, this was easier because I've learned about it growing up. And, and maybe that's why it's easier. And I don't... Read. because the cockpit's in english it's in english so that's exactly what i was gonna say like it's a little bit easier because i can read the cockpit and try to figure out what the fuck i'm doing versus having to translate the cockpit like that i think that's another factor right agreed but you don't then the p51 come out first for dcs world as well so maybe yeah it came out we like, think 100 oh, 100 that's yeah. true no so i will put it this way if you look at the design of the airplane the flaps are notched so you know 5 10 25 30 40 right the engine controls itself, basically. It has automatic mixture control. You just set the prop and the throttle. Okay. The engine gauges are separate from the flight gauges. The airplane flies extremely tame, for the most part, until you try and yank it. A true, well, that's did, true. That is it's true. got I a did, wide gear. I always yank it, though. You so did it's say very notch. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did did you, with yeah, the yeah. gear down? With the gear down or yeah. gear up? Always, always gear always down. Gear Stay down tall for the notch? Here. I gotcha. I think I think the World War Two one was actually a very I difficult. Think, I think this is a really hard one, but I think we nailed it. I agree. All right, we, let's we've move got on. our first. We got our first trash. Do you have a trash bin like sound effect? <laughs> cha -ching. I don't. I need one though. Oh well, wait, hold on. I think Cha Ching would be S, not. <laughs> All right, I guess one man's trash is another how about, how about, man's treasure, right? <laughs> you're gonna hear it on stream, but how about uh, about shut the fuck up. Know your fucking place, trash.
I'll have to put that on my stream deck. Now your place trash. All right, so we move on to strike. We move on to strike here. Yeah, this is gonna be okay. like a two-hour video. Good. I've done my work. Goodbye. Good. Oh, thanks, Lumber. It was good. Thanks, good talking Bye. to you. Bye, Lumber. All right, All right, let's move on. So we got um, we'll go bottom to top. We got the vegan. Everybody's gonna freak out. Vegan's got deer. So, vegan, not hard to take off. Not too hard to start up. A couple switches here and there, right? You do the have hardest. to. You have to do. You do have to enter in. QFE and all that stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So the hardest thing about the Vigan or the Wigan is weapon pre-planning mm -hmm. and pre uh, so weapons, setting up the weapons, pre-planning your route, setting up your mark points, putting in the data cartridge, the correct data cartridge, and also setting up the right QFE because you have the wrong QFE or the wrong Everything's setting. Wrong. Everything is wrong. Yes. Yeah, I, I aborted that aircraft at that stage. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of hours in it, and I and I always say I'm going to go back and try to learn it, but I get turned off by this vehicle very fast. Uh, so one exactly of the things you said, easy startup, easy taxi, easy takeoff. It's super easy to fly, super easy to land. It's fast, it's fun to fly, but there's a lot of backbone that goes into it. Yeah, I, I think D or E for me. Simply because being able to actually use the thing for any reason is so hard. Other I'm than shoot name nine. I'm thinking I'm thinking E just because of the pre planning, the weapon setup, and making sure you're in the the right uh, weapons modes. But like even the computer, like the computer in that thing is so weird and you have to look at that like five digit readout all the time to know what the fuck's going on. Well, not to Swedish. mention not to mention the radar is super weird looking. Well, well, it's got spaghetti all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and and lingonberries. On, on top of that, the other problem is uh, y you end up with you end up with the RWR, right? And you have to learn the tones. You have to learn the beeps, the beeps and the creeps. And the, and the creeps. And uh, I think that is like so counterintuitive. Like you basically it's have not, to have like perfect pitch to understand. It's not an easy doing. module at all to learn. No, I think it goes in E or F, to be honest. Would we agree that you'd have to white knuckle learning this module? Like you really have to want this shit. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to be Swedish or a masticist. And I think people won't like it, but I think... I think it's fun. I, th I think it's very fair the way we're grading it just because of... Uh, I think the pre-planning and setting up everything for the data cartridge is the hardest part. Like end yeah. of the day, nobody comes to you and says, hey... I want to get into DCS. What's the one module I should learn? And nobody says the Vigan. No. Except except maybe one Swedish except guy. Except for maybe yeah. one Swedish guy. And he's a chef. Yeah, and he he's the Swedish chef. And he doesn't you're either Swedish, about it. You're either Swedish, <laughs> you're a streamer, or you're a sadist. Yes. <laughs> one of those three. Yes. I'm thinking the F category. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. I'm going with F. Again, not based on the quality of the module, no. just how easy it is. Oh, it's, how easy it's an amazing... It is an amazing module and i love flying it but for a beginner i would not recommend that okay so we'll move on to uh the a10c2 now this is the newer one this is not the a10c this is the newer one so it's got a little bit extra systems right we got the uh let's, let's, let's start out with the a all and right then... yeah let's start it with, okay that's fair um i'm just gonna stick that in the trash <laughs> <laughs> um so okay so maybe do we need to clarify too that this is an FC three aircraft, you know it's it's its systems are very dumbed down, right? Yeah. Uh, you don't have the clicky cockpit. It's it's all key bindings. Uh, so you have to memorize key bindings versus where buttons are in the physical cockpit in the plane. Mm -hmm. That that makes it a little bit harder for me because I don't want to remember the bindings. I want to be able to click like I memorize things visually personally. I don't remember things buy a book so for me like visually helps a lot better than than key binding so that that puts it down a notch for me it's not hard to fly the weapons are very limited you're you're limited to a lot of dumb ammunitions i think the smartest thing on there is the maverick right i i'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt yeah and i'm gonna actually agree with chat should we do fc3 on its own category all fc3 modules or should it be yeah i don't know i thought about that earlier i mean it's a good point it's a hard 
sell because the A10 would stand so differently from FC3 fighters, but it also uh, depends on how dedicated the person is. Because if they want, if they just want to jump in and fly, that's not an aircraft that's just going to be able to jump in and fly. That that's what gets about sixty percent of people trying DCS. Now, who the yeah, hell is this guy? Up. Who's this? We magically <laughs> pop in here, fucking <laughs> magic man, sneaky little magic. bitch. <laughs> how you doing, magic? So, What's up, uh, dude? So, um, well, Welt makes a very good point. He says it's not an extra ca extra category. It's about how easy it is for beginners. Uh, and, and I agree. And, and I think you have to account for for that. It, you know, is, is it easier because it's just bindings, or is it easier to click around the cockpit? I think that's going to depend on people left and right. And that's why I have multiple people in here helping with the grading. Because, mm. um, you know, for me personally, it's not, but maybe two of you, it is, and which I'd be happy to move it up a notch because of that. It's a good point, though. Maybe we should throw in the A category just because there's not many key bindings. It, very little key bindings for sure. It's easy to fly. It's easy to take off. It's easy to land. And the, and the, the systems are, are very primitive. Very, very primitive. And you can take rounds and not fucking die immediately. It's true. That is. And you can actually true. have a chance to learn what the fuck's going on in the, in the situation. Agreed. I think we'll keep it in A. I'm, I'm happy with that. What do you guys think? I agree. All right. Yep. Now let's do the A10C. Not the two, the C. So this one for me is going to definitely go below A. Yes. Um, we get a lot more systems. We have the very advanced uh, systems like the CDU. We have the TGP to deal with. We have uh, multiple displays and multiple sensors of, in of interest. Uh, lots of different munitions to learn. So it definitely puts it down, I would say, like C or below for me. So I'm going to say... C is the lowest how it goes simply because it's purely air to ground. You're not dealing with any like air to ground, air to air, having to switch your brain around. That's just me. But if we're talking about for the easiest, the easiest module, I think it's going to be higher because one, it has no. a whole tutorial that you can go through that takes you through everything from start to finish. You can say so, that about every module, though. Most modules you can say, have that. You can say that about every module. I think the assumption would be that the tutorials exist if it's complete, right? I, I got to go with D or E. I mean, I love the, the A-10 is my, my bay. Yeah, this is by, by no means is saying we don't like these systems, aircraft. This is a system. If you, if, you, if you master the A-10, you can master any airplane in DCS. That's what I always say. That is yeah. But there's, there is a lot to learn. And yeah. you, you say it's only air to ground, but there's so much you have to learn about like the missile warning system, all the sensors, all the different shore heads. There's so much stuff yeah. to learn. You have, with you have to learn you have to learn spotting. You have to learn uh, a TGP is on it. Like a TGP drove me nuts when I first you know, the A ten was my very first module. And trying to understand the TGP, it drove me it drove me nuts. I had no idea what the the TGP was doing. Like I didn't know how to slew it. I didn't yeah. know how to do anything. It was it was very challenging, and I think we gotta we gotta look back as a beginner. I, I like what, what I'm saying. I mean, it's hard for me to maybe maybe I'm biased. Because you have to I put your bias that aside. That's the hard part, man. Yeah, but I came from that community, so I really kind of knew how the systems work. But as far as knowing how the things take it, I mean, the only reason that I learned how it did it was going through those. Uh, those tutorials and i know they have them for some of the other aircraft but i just feel that when you have somebody to to hold your hand and walk you through it it's going to be easier for somebody to do that rather than just throwing you to an aircraft that you have to memorize the buttons to push i think you bring up some good points and i agree with the the module tutorials but the a10 is a lot and you, there's so many HOTAS commands. Like it is a yeah, huge. That's thing. the other thing you have to and remember. I think, we're, I think we're, we're all forgetting because we've been playing it so long. Yep. That it's yep. easy, and we know muscle memory now. But if you're brand new to DCS and this is your first thing, and you're like, "Hey, China that has this, TMS yeah, that this, cool. DMS that, CMS that, boat switch this," you know, Cooley had that. You know, there's so much crap. So that's true. I think the, the, other thing, the other thing on that topic is that um, like when I first got the A-10, I 
started to play it. I tried to bind it to, uh, what did I have? I think I had an X-52 at the time. I aborted and I waited until I got the, the, the Hoggett or the Hoggett, the, um, Warthog because I, it just, it was like, I, it makes so much more sense on a button layout made for that plane versus something else I'm trying to adapt to it. So that for me, that was very frustrating. And I think for most people getting into it, they're not going to have the four or $500 HOTUS system that matches it at least to some degree. Yeah. And, and so, to ping on what, oh, sorry, go ahead, magic. So just hear me out for a second. So when I first started DCS, I was in freaking, uh, I was in Afghanistan. All I had was a laptop and an Xbox controller. And the first time I flew that thing is that the only thing I really had to figure out was the throttle position. So what I did is I binded it to where that the left and right uh, sticks would either add or remove throttle. And that was it, right? Obviously, the, the, the flight sticks were just, I used the thumbsticks for that. But the rest of it was all keyboard. And I could fly that thing from the first, from the first time, you know, um, just listening, watching the, the little video or going through the tutorials. So that made it easy. Like I, FC3 at that time wasn't non-existent, but, but compare that to the, all this stuff that we have now, just flying aircraft and not knowing how to deploy any weapons is, is really easy. So the beginner portion just starting to get into it. I think it's much easier than anything else. Now, if you go into weapon systems and all that, then yeah, I get it because there's a whole bunch of buttons that you can press. Yeah, and but we're taking all that into account, not just like being able to get up in the air. Like you yeah, this is like a yeah. this is like everything. a comprehensive. Yeah. Of like, oh. if you're gonna tell somebody to sink their teeth into one module because it's the easiest to start with, which one would it be? Not the A10, like for sure. <laughs> no, I I would agree with Tricker though because I would say start with the A10 because if you can master that, then you can fly anything else in the game. True. Yeah, but, but it takes. But how long does it take you to? It's not the easiest to master. Mm -mm. It takes you a long no. time to master. I still haven't mastered, it and I've been flying it for I don't know how long. And what I was gonna say was, is depending on what you're saying, there is tutorials. Yeah, and there's tutorials for other aircraft. But even with those, I mean, it like you can run through that tutorial and like, okay, I've gone through this tutorial now, and the first time you get in the air, you're like, fuck, I don't remember how to do anything. <laughs> you know, like, let me answer a couple of chat things. First of all, Bullet says this is not the easiest list to make, which is true. <laughs> it um, is. Uh, well, it makes a good point that the modules, that the A10C's module manual is like 800 pages. I would say that's not easy. Um, Agreed. And then uh, M1 Combat says, uh, this was asked earlier, are we covering getting into the air or getting the first kill? We're covering everything. It doesn't matter whether you got in the air fast. It doesn't matter whether you got your first kill fast. It matters whether you're learning the entire ma module as a package is it easy is it easy to take off easy to land easy to stay flying in the air easy to employ all the systems easy to learn everything we're, we're trying to cover the entire module as a package because there's so much to cover in some of these so my last point is so i i'm, I'm gonna go with e or f I'm, I'm gearing towards e and the other thing like i talked about with the, the tgp is the startup I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the startup. I mean, I read so much stuff and like I, I was determined to learn it. But uh, I mean, trying to tell someone like, hey, this is the easiest module. Eh. The A10 is not easy. Yeah, and just like, like the, the startup is tough. And most people online do auto starts in the A10. I'm not saying that that's a thing, but I see it all the time. You can tell someone auto starts it because they, their lights start flashing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it goes into D for me just because the things it has going for it for easy is taking off, landing, like flying it in general, all fairly simple. It's literally just the amount of systems and weapons employment and maybe the startup process for me. Easiest gun to shoot, though. Easiest gun to shoot for sure. Yeah. I, I think it stays in D for me, but but I'm happy to move it if... Uh... Yeah, no, no disrespect to Magic's point, but I just... Uh, I think it's a very difficult disrespected and i and i and i will i would say i would say d because yes it is one of the most in-depth and difficult aircraft but again to go back on the point of like you can be effective and lethal on that thing and never do a nine line on the cdu and sure. you know also like, feature complete it is also feature complete. complete. yeah yep. Yep. yeah so right, let's leave it in d yeah and i think um i think that's good because i think that leaves the a10c uh, 
room to be put in the E category for me, just because there's a little bit more to learn. Um, you introduce more memory, more more uh, muscle memory for all the extra commands you got to learn for the uh, what's it called, the helmet mounted system, the hemics, yeah. the hemics. Yeah. Uh, and then you know there's a couple extra weapons, isn't there? Yes. Is it the scorpion something? I don't yeah. Remember. Yep. It's just. It's just more precision guided yeah. weapons. So, but I would agree. So for me, that e. puts it like D and a half or E. But since there's no half mm -hmm. categories, I think it just drops. I'm telling, I'm telling you, D needs to have like three cat it, subcategories. It does. It yeah. does. We need yeah. we need three different. We need more hot, hot tubs. tubs. Yeah, we need more hot tubs. I think I think that's everybody's problem. Is you always need more hot tubs. You know? <laughs> Real hot tubs. I just realized that. Yeah, they're all hot tubs, dude. They're yeah, all hot tubs. <laughs> that's hilarious. The hot tub tier list. All right, so let's move on to. I think that was pretty quick and simple, right? I think we all agree. A10C yeah. is basically the A10 extended with some extra stuff, so it moves down instantly. Just a whole bunch more shit in your face. That's right. All right, so let's move to the A10, or to the, sorry, to the AB8B, the Harrier. Um, now, this one's a hard one for me because I learned a lot of the stuff, and now they've changed a lot of the stuff. So I'm actually not current. I'm not, I'm no longer rated in the AV8B. Uh, there was a lot of negative training there for me. So I know Tricker's pretty up to speed on the AV8, so I, I want to put in my two cents before you go ham on it, because I'm pretty rusty. But one thing with the AV8 that really racked my brain was employing the Mavericks in that thing was totally different than Maverick employment from other aircraft. From what I remember, it was like different sensor stuff, and it really threw me off. Agreed. Yeah, Mavericks, think... Mavericks are definitely... Those are my favorite weapons to shoot in the A-10 or in the F-16 or the F-18, but uh, the AV8 beast a whole nother beast for me when I tried to do that. Super easy to fly though. Anyways, I'll yeah, try the Harrier, the Harrier's taken I don't, I don't know how I want to start this, but so the the Harrier I think is easy to start for me. Yes. Uh for beginners maybe. But I think it's easier to start. Um takeoff can be easy depending on the different kind of takeoff that you do. So there's different takeoffs that you can do. Flying it is easy. Uh, landing it conventionally is easy for me. Uh, short field landing is fine, but like trying to do a uh, VTOL landing definitely that takes a harder. lot, a lot of practice. That takes a lot of practice. Yes. And I don't know if you guys remember when it first came out. Uh, I think it was like 2.2 DCS, whatever it was. But anyway, when it first came out, I remember like for like a week straight, everybody was just doing VTOL everything, and there were so many crashes. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I mean, it's just part of the learning curve of any module but i'm gonna have to go with like d or e for them for the harrier yeah i'm reading i'm reading the chat here and like yeah. heavy metal saying you know everybody aviates had an engine modeling overhaul so i haven't flown it since then so apparently it's a lot harder than i remember yeah i'm, I'm really removed from it but the the whole learning of the uh, the avionics and how to deploy stuff that kind of freaking threw me because it was off compared to everything else because the only i can really compare it to was the a10 but the uh, the like I agree with Tricker with the the landing types. If you're doing it as as they're doing it right now in the military, doing those carrier or uh, shipboard landings, that's that's really hard. Those are you can't tough, be man. Yeah, to do it because they they want to pilots pilots out there now when they're they they brag about getting that that wheel on that line, right? Yeah, so that's. Yeah. that's that's what they use to to gauge themselves. That's like that's say, like hey. the three wire. That's like the three wire on a on a carrier yeah. for them. Yeah, so I'm going I, with like F on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it should be F. I, that's my vote. You guys, you guys, good with F? Yeah, E yeah. or F for me. And I, I mean, and the reason I'm saying that is, um, yeah, F is fine for me. The reason I'm saying F is uh, just because it's harder to take off and land compared to the A10. Yeah, like even if you do a conventional takeoff, you can't rotate very far or your tail exactly. hits, right? So like yeah, that's exactly. not something that a new person's going to even think about. I I always hated the sensor selecting uh in it cuz it's not intuitive to me. Um where, you know, each and maybe I'm maybe it's maybe it's negative training on my part, but I always felt like pushing the right sensor was not an intuitive thing for me. Like you had to I literally agree. remember if I push left it's going to do this, if I push aft it's going to do this versus like the A10 it made sense. If I push left, we're going to the left screen. If I push right, we're going to the right screen. That kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That's, what, that's what Moose was saying about the Mavericks. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I agree with the Mavericks. Like, every time, 
even if I take a month off, like I always got to refresh my memory. Like, what am I doing? Like, oh, I got to hit, you know, sensor select four now to go to IRMV. Yep. You know, yep. sort of slew the Maverick around. So yeah, like, anyway. like, like, like you said, like even going back after playing other aircraft, it's one of the hardest ones to get back into. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And, and, I feel and, like then, they, and then they change everything on another patch and then you got to relearn something. Yep. That's another category, but yep. sorry. All right. So yeah. the SU-25, not the T, the SU-25, this is the uh, more basic SU-25. <sighs> Honestly, I don't, have much, never I don't have much experience in it, so I will let you guys discuss it. I flew this one a lot when uh, we had the uh, Blue Flag Cold War server in Nevada, because um, that was one of the best air. air that was ground. the best server ever. It was the best server ever. I'm I'm 100 <laughs> on board. That was such a good server. Um, I thought this one was pretty easy. Obviously, it's it's FC3, so it it kind of moves up because of that. You're just learning key bindings. You're not clicking anything in the cockpit. Startup's really easy. Um, it's like three fucking buttons um just like all the fc3 stuff I, I think for me this one goes up into the a tier um and, and you know the munitions it's all dumb bombs and dumb dumb things I, i'd say this one almost goes up into s tier almost um you know the a10a has mavericks to deal with so you have a screen and and you have to slew stuff over and pick up targets and lock them but the the su25 non-t variant has none of that as far as I remember, yeah. it, it literally I mean, is yeah. stupid munitions, all dumb munitions. It goes where you shoot them and nowhere else. Um, and FC3, if we haven't said it. So. It's FC3. I think this one goes right. up into S for me. But I kind of want to... Getting a point, though. What's the point? What's the point? It's free. No, it's not. Not this one. The SU-25 this T really? is the free one. The T is the free is one. It? Oh, wow. You pay... T this one becomes an FC3. Oh, okay. I'll shut up. I, I would agree it goes into S or A, and my only concern would be the RWR. Like, mm. yeah, the RWR, the RWR yeah. is pretty rough. Yeah, yeah the SPO. It is, it is rough, but again, looking at it from you know nothing, and you start fresh. You know nothing. Yeah, I mean, to that to that point, it is pretty easy. Once you, if, if you, you're not coming from something where you know, if you're not coming from you know the western stuff it's it's really simple if you really think about it you literally have you know it's this type the radar strength is you know this yellow this yellow arc that you follow and it is coming from this direction it's it's not that hard the only downside is it it doesn't give you multiple it gives you two targets but it only gives you one primary mm -hmm. and you don't Does know it? what type does if you it explain not try that, to kill you like the freaking SC twenty five T. Does it not always want to just fall out the sky? No, it's not that bad. SC twenty five T doesn't fall out of the sky very much. Only if you carry like way too many weapons. Yeah. I if you, if you try to if you try to explain the RWR to me the way you just did as a beginner, I'd be completely lost. If I'd I told you like, these, I'd probably be like, I told screw you, this game. If I told you <laughs> these. If I told you these three lights this are light the target blink, type, fly away from this light. <laughs> if if these three three or six lights are the are the type that you're being uh, locked by or looked at by, and then I told you this is the strength, which equals sort of like the distance. See, I'm already confused. No. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you this. Honestly, the RWR in the Russian aircraft is easier until you move on to an American style RWR yeah, that's what where I'm you saying. have so much more information and you're right. like, holy shit, now right. I don't know. I don't want to just throw that i just wanted to throw that part right, we'll move there. it down to a then i think we'll move it As, down to a. but for any aircraft though rwr it, it applies to all of them it's the principle not the system you don't I think have it to goes do to a. all right all right i think we'll stick it in a it'll God make everybody it, happy and then you know God damn it tricker can go jerk off tonight that he made it go down to a <laughs> brought him down a pig yeah down, all right <laughs> let's talk about my only fans Let's take a quick commercial break That's so right. Tricker can put on a cute bikini. All right. Oh, my God. The last one. The last one in this category. The T. The SU-25 T. This is the free one. Let's hear it, Magic. What do you think, Magic? I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, I mean, it's. I, fl I flew it a whole hell of a lot. I, I like the way it works. I just think that when it's heavy, it, 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 it wants to drop out of the sky a lot. I think, I think it's all planes do that. Not as much as that one. I always felt like it was always trying to kill me. <laughs> well, and it 
and landing it. If you land it, you know, if you if you that thing hits the ground too hard, you're freaking done. <laughs> it is hard to land the SU twenty five T, specifically because you got to keep it going quick, and then and then you need a long runway because it doesn't have good brakes. My favorite thing about the SU twenty five is that when you get going too fast, it'll let you know because it starts fucking shaking all over the place. Oh yeah, it's like, whoa, bro. whoa, slow yeah. your roll. Even the taxiing, it shakes all over the place when you taxi it. It's so annoying. I think B is good simply because it just has advanced systems, but even those are simple because it's FC3. Two yeah, clicks so and is, you're fucking... It is simplified because of that, but there is a lot more to learn, right? There is. I, th- I think it moves down because it definitely can't be at the same level as the SU25. Like It just it just can't. There's It's totally different playing with more stuff, so I think it moves down just on that basis, but I'm, I'm fine with keeping it in B. Yeah. You I, guys good with that? with that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll go top to bottom. This is going to be the multi role category, I believe. Is that what this one is? Yeah. The multi role. Multi role. Let's get ready to rumble. We should take an intermission. Everybody go grab a beer because this is going to be some shit right here. Oh, this is going to be some crazy shit. If you guys need to get a beer or a drink, go get it now. All right. I'm good. I'll I'm be back. Good. I'm gonna get a drink. You and Trigger can start hacking it out. I'll be right back. All right. So let's go bottom to top. All right. So we have the F16 Block 50. Now I guess the, the preface to this S tier. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, I guess we're done. There you go. So I guess that's, the preface to this would be that's my bias boy right there. We're missing a bunch of stuff, right? So you're going oh, to end up with a lot, lot of negative of training uh, on this module. Um, it's it's probably what like 25 percent complete, maybe I don't know. I don't remember the list, but it's it's missing a lot of shit. Maybe maybe a little higher. Oh man! So I think startup is pretty simple compared startup's to easy. yes all the other aircraft. Couple switches, couple switches done. Um, taxiing is easy unless you go too fast. Yep. Flying is great. Landing, easy. I think. I think landing is. I, I always thought it was easy for me, but I think um, landing's harder in this one. I think of all the planes um, in this. I was going to say that because I I thought it came easy, but I don't know why. But um, I mean, when you fly online, like you always see F 16s crashing, <laughs> and that's yeah. why I made a video. That's why I made a video on it. Um, and I'm trying to think of where this one should go. Okay, what are we? F sixteen. Yeah, we're only F sixteen. We haven't decided where it should go yet. We're just uh, yeah, I think you have, you have a lot of systems to learn, but they're all. I mean, like the A ten, they're they're intuitive, I think. But they're also very basic at the moment. Yes, but they I are think. also very basic at the moment. Um, but but like, and I don't know if this is gonna stay. But here's here's one thing you got to consider. Um, uh, Maverick employment. You have to uh align them with your TGP yeah. before you take off. Mm-hmm. Like that's not mm-hmm. something that's easy and going to be fun for a new person to, to really get into. No, who's writes know, manuals and, for the F-16 and he's still yeah, having issues with it. I know, you know, yeah, I, mean? I had to watch fucking triggers video and I write the manuals. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, but at the same time though, that is an additional st- Like that's an in-depth, uh, operation. Like you can do the Mavericks visual without aligning them and just, yeah. Yeah, but we're yeah. talking whole package. We're talking whole true, package here. True, true. So I think true. I think this one's like C or below for me because yes, it's easy to fly. It's not too hard to take off. It's a little bit quirky on landing. You have that short wheelbase. You can't turn faster. You know, if you if you give it a little wiggle when you put the wheels down, you know, it's going to tip over. Um, Would we agree that the amount of information that DataLink and FCR are giving you on top of everything that's else, helpful. it is helpful. But if you're if you're new. That is information it's overload. It's a overload. lot. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot to deal with and understand and appreciate what the hell is going on. Why is this guy white? Why is this guy red? Why is this guy yellow? Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. I agree. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm, this is definitely C or C or D for me. I'm gonna say C because I think we have too many D's at the moment. There's you can never have uh, too many D. Can't have too many D's, but I'd say um, C for now. And as we move on, we can. I adjust. say C just because I think the systems are pretty basic at the moment. And I don't think they're I don't think they're that hard to learn for a beginner. So this is a point in time video. In the future, this might have Could to move change. down. 
But for right and we're gonna, now, we're going to do another one of these three hour. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do a few of these three hour surveys. Yeah, we're only like an hour and twenty minutes in, dude. Put the know, SU two five A as your is mom's fair, a hoe. Agreed. <laughs> what was that? What did what did Lumber put? Put the SU twenty five S or SU twenty five A in S or your mom's a hoe is what I got. Ooh. Thanks for the bits. Appreciate that. Called oh, your mom a hoe. Jeez. <laughs> Actually, he left it up to jabbers of whether or not his mom's a hoe. I know. No, I'm gonna call my mom and ask her. Ooh. Damn it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't. You're right. Do it live on stream right it's now. It's 11 o'clock at night. She's probably asleep. That would be like the worst phone call she could ever get. Hey, mom. Well, there you go, man. She's asleep at 11. She's not out. No, Leave it true. at B. That's Leave true. it at A. That's true. It stays in A. <laughs> Thanks for the bit, Slumber. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. I think we leave it in C for now. I think this is a this is going to be a variable that changes in the future. We'll have to revisit this list. Uh, but it stays in A. All right. So let's move on to the JF. 17 now jeff the jeff 17 i instantly dropped down to like e but that's bias on my brain learning every other aircraft and just not understanding the jeff because it's so weird that's exactly I mean, what i think so i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with the rwr on this because there's no beeps it's just missile missile, missile but it's tracking, relaxing if you're a new tracking. person if you're a new person yeah. and you hear that aren't you just like oh this feels great it is, you Sorry. know, it's like, oh, missile. but continue with your, missile. your amazing thought process on the Jeff. So I think the Jeff is, is, <laughs> it's nice. It's got a lot of helpful information. The, the system, the, the, the glass cockpit or, or the, is it glass or is it digital? What do you call that? When it's all screen? glass, glass. glass. Yeah, it's all glass. Uh, that makes things a little easier because everything is just digital readouts. But um, I find it incredibly hard to understand what the fuck's going on. And like the fact that a lot of the stuff in it is like preset, like like all of the, if you go to like land at a runway, you have to know what number it is to set it up. So you have to reference the knee board. I don't know that anybody's going to know how to do that stuff. Same thing with radios, right? I don't, you can punch in the manual yeah. stuff, but the radios are a pain in the ass, board. man. Gotta go to your knee board. Now, now this is all biased because I've learned every other aircraft before this one. So, um, I don't know that I'm a hundred percent on track. Like that's a, that's a tough one. It's a tough one for me. I don't, I don't care for it. I think it's a pain in the ass to learn, but again, this is coming from experience and all the other stuff first. And so it's very foreign to me. It's easy yeah. to learn. So, well, all right, let me say that. So it's easy to tax, easy to fly, easy to land, easy to dogfight. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of situational awareness. There's a lot of data link stuff going on that you have to learn about. Which I think goes into um, the sensory overload, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of sensory stuff going on with the Jeff. And then you also have to learn, like, you really have to dive in deep on how to set up the IFF. Like what you, like, like what, uh, you talked about with the uh, communications mm -hmm. and your airfields you're going to go to yep. if you want to return. Um, I, th I found the weapons pretty simple, except for some of the like man of the loop weapons. Um, so I, there is a lot with the Jeff though. Yeah. I think in like D or E for me. And that's I'm same with jabbers though. It's like, because of the way everything works in my brain, it's harder for me, but if somebody's coming at it cold, I'm seeing people in the chat, like, Hey man, it's easy. Trust me. Easy. So that's kind of one of those things of like, it, it, are, are we, is it hard for us because our brains are operating differently? You I, know, I think Jabbers. That's the hardest part is, is yeah. trying to be unbiased when you're when you can't be for this one. Yeah, you know, and and I, I think the counterpoint to that, and I think somebody said it in chat is, uh, let's see, Rizbari said it. He said if it's so much different from everything else, then it's probably not a good first module. If we assume people are going to want to learn other modules after, it's kind of a kind of a thinker, you know, like. True. It also weighs to the point of if you're trying to learn it and you're reaching out to friends, there's less likelihood of people knowing that specific module versus being like us and being like, oh, I can tell you anything else about yeah, anything else. True. But <laughs> it's not but anti, so it's trash tier. I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with E, just because so e? there's a. I think there's a lot to learn. Okay. I mean, so, I, mean I understand some people in the chat are saying it's pretty simple, but I think flying it is simple, but then trying to understand the weapons and like the iff ins it, it definitely makes it difficult it 
they can get overwhelming for someone that's brand new. Who, and I who, think I think sorry. some I think the F sixteen is a lot simpler than the JF seventeen when it comes comes regards to like systems and setting up everything to get going for a beginner. Yeah, I've always felt that like when you take like Eastern versus Western aircraft, the systems in the Western stuff are just way higher as as far as how hard they are to l learn or way easier to learn rather um and, and i think it's i think there's like a there's like a design principle between them like you know you take the eastern stuff and it's like they give everything to the pilot every switch every button that you could ever override anything with and so you have to learn all of this extra stuff because you know they make it so that the pilot has complete control over every little detail whereas a lot of the Western stuff is we're going to take away all of the little control things so that you can focus on what you're having to do for the mission. It's interesting you say that because in writing flight manuals, one of the things I've learned is like, they're like, all right, the pilot doesn't need to know this. Just tell them what they want to know, right? Like the in-depth engineering stuff is not important. So yeah, lends to what you're saying. Yeah. Like uh, DZ Sekib says you're all biased towards Western jets and you're not wrong, but I think you're, you're not wrong because they're easier to learn. I think a lot of the Western stuff is just easier to learn because of what I just said. If we had more Eastern full fidelity, I could argue that point. I would love to see some full fidelity. It'd be awesome. You know? It'd yeah, be awesome. I would too. I, yeah, hundred percent. So I, I think That's I'm fine leaving issue, this. Yeah. I think I'm fine leaving this in the E tier. It is. And just to combat is Western jet thing. I mean, like, I want more Eastern stuff like the F1 Mirage. Like I want that one big time. But when I'm looking, I don't know. I don't know personally, but looking at all the videos and pictures, that thing looks super challenging <laughs> to fly. Yeah. But that's why I want to fly it because right. I love for the, the challenge. challenge. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you look at like we're we're a country that spends like more than the next 10 countries combined on military technology and stuff. So, of course, we're going to have the easiest thing to operate like, you know, yeah. All the people are thinking about everything they could think about to make it easy. So, I agree. It is true. It is. It is French. Sorry, but <laughs> it still looks very challenging. All right, let's move to the F eighteen C. So, I think to start with, this one goes right up there with the F sixteen. Just to start with, I think um, it's not hard to take off. It's not hard to land. It's not hard to taxi. Uh. The landing style is a little different, but it doesn't have to be. You know, you usually just plow it into the ground and hope for the best, uh, as you would on the carrier. But you don't have to do it that way. You could come in for a soft landing just like any other plane. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of sensors. There's a lot of data input to make it easier or harder. You get the sensor overload. Um, so for me, this one goes in C, but there's a lot of stuff to learn. So maybe it drops down to D. But I don't think those things are that hard to learn. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on what Moose said about the F-16. So the F-18, I would like to put lower. And the reasoning is sensory overload. I think whenever I'm flying the F-18, like I feel like there's so much information that it can actually be a hindrance to you. Too much. It's too much information. Like mm -hmm. if you don't understand it, it's too much information. Yes. So you got to kind of buckle down and always, learn it all. Exactly. And um, once you learn it, yeah, it's going to be amazing. But for someone brand new, there is a lot of information. Yeah. Yeah. And and we're not, we're not saying that you have to take this all at once. You know, obviously you learn every plane one system at a time, but there's just a ton of stuff to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say with, with the information thing, especially with DCS and a beginner, you'd probably find yourself getting in a situation, obviously getting killed. And like trying to play it back in your mind and it would take so many repeats of this to finally figure out like what are you looking at that you need to know and not know you know like yeah exactly it's just way too much it is a lot it is a lot you have three screens and a hud so okay i'm fine with leaving that at d you guys are good with that yeah great module though oh yeah 100 percent. all right let's move oh. on to the f5e <laughs> This is Dude, I'm going to put that at a... I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yeah. 
If not S, definitely A. I think it's for sure an A to start with. Um, yes. I would say the only thing that's hard about it is uh, it can get a little squirrely in the air because the roll rate. But it's easy to l take off, easy to land. Unless Dude, it's, it's not easy to take off if you don't if you forget about the uh, lifting the gear. The nose wheel steering. The nose wheel steering is wild. <laughs> yes. That How is many true. times have people drift around doing donuts in that fucking jet? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna keep it at A, just because I feel like S tier, S tier for me has to be the full package. There's nothing hard about it. But if there's one little thing that's hard about it, I think that it drops down just a notch. It, that's me. It's the god tier. It's the fucking god tier. It's S. I think yeah. very few things should be an S. Amazingly easy aircraft. Yes, hundred percent. Um, I would say this is like, as far as ease of use, this is hundred percent up there with uh, mm -hmm. FC three. There's not a lot to it. It's fairly easy to start. It's easy to to do everything else. That everything's a, a dumb munition where you don't have to, you know, slew a sensor or move anything over. You just pickle bombs if you want to pickle them, and you shoot guns and hope for the best. Yeah, that's an easy A for me. Or think just be I want the S, but I, I know I, you. Do. I, I, know can, you I do. can agree. I can agree with the A though. And super easy. Everything's super easy about it, but um, radar <laughs> sucks. But you don't really use it for you, the radar. Nobody really uses the radar anyway. Bombing in it is a another beast, but it's a very easy airplane to learn to fly. It's everything's dumb munitions on it. It's yeah, so exactly. easy. Everything to is me, so easy. To me, the S category is going to be like somebody gets in, doesn't read shit, and can just start the thing and fly it. So because the F5, you have to give like at least a little effort to learn how to start it and learn how to like turn the boost bumps on and stuff. Yeah, it drops it down for sure. A, a is perfect. I think uh, Pixie says it's harder to fly than the 16, 17, and 18. Wrong. I don't think that's true. I think uh, the fact that you have to trim it may be that case. You don't have to trim the other ones. For it's the harder to fly because it doesn't have a fly-by-wire system. Yeah. But I don't think it's but... that hard to fly. It's not hard to fly at all. You just have to trim. Yeah, I agree. And that's that's part of flying. Trim's an easy concept to understand. Yeah, I think if you're going to play a flight simulator, you're going to have to learn to trim. If you don't turn on your pitch dampeners, it's going to be fucking hell. That's part of the startup, right? <laughs> so, yeah. All right, I think I'm going to leave that in A. That can be a controversy between uh, people. Ben Pickle says F5 is barely multi-roll. Actually, if DCS modeled it to the full capability, you could fire Mavericks off this thing. So again, don't agree. I think it's like a, a, a purpose thing in real life for me. Like it is a multi-roll aircraft. It is a fighter bomber, mm. right? I, I wasn't looking at it as a DCS perspective. I was it's looking a fighter at it trainer. Like, it's a fighter trainer. <laughs> fighter <laughs> trainer bomber aggressor. You, yeah. So should we move it over to the trainer See, category? It's everything. That's that's, that's why it's S tier has so many role. different roles. If I could give it like an A plus, I would. But but we don't have that here. All right. All right. Let's do the J eleven. It, it's itching to get on that boat it's, in the jacuzzi, it's trying, the jacuzzi it's boat. Trying. It like it like tried to jump on and fell into the water. You know what I mean? Oh, it was okay. right there. It was right throw there. a life preserver. That's right. All right, so we got the uh, the J11. I'm gonna That's start. Bay. I'm gonna start in the A, just because it it it's FC3. There's not a lot of systems. I guess you have the heads down display you got to deal with, you know. But it's just it's just air to air. You do you can do air to ground, but that's not really its primary role. It just happens to have air to ground stuff. It's like they strapped bombs onto it afterwards just because they needed to do something with it. Mm. But talking about an aircraft that sucks to trim, the J11 and SU27, you're constantly fighting trim based on your. Yeah, that's true. You know, but still, a super easy aircraft. Radar is actually easy to understand. Yeah, because it's basic, right? I think a lot of the FC3 stuff is going to move up to the top here just because FC3. Yeah. I think, I think I'm fine leaving it here. Um, I think that the hardest part about it is going to be, uh, you know, you can't make more than 6G turns unless you, uh, whatever the button's called, it's like the brake button or something. You, you have to, uh, press the, the button to reduce the limitations of the flight model, right? Yeah. I would say this is the first iteration 
on the line of fighters to introduce IFF. So that's something to learn over F5 is like, hey, you have the capability now to EO or lock or IFF somebody. Yeah. And you'll shoot down a friendly if you don't. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it moves down because of that because you don't have, you have to manually it, IFF, right? Yeah, but it's so like easy. EO though. mode. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. move it down just because of how many times I've been team killed by it or team killed somebody <laughs> named Moose. I don't know. Well, I was going <laughs> to say it, man. You don't have to dime yourself out like that. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about yet. He doesn't know what he's talking about. IFF is not manual. It is if you're in EO mode. And heavy yeah, metal, I know you can do 9Gs. That, that's what I was trying to get at. You have to use the ACS limiter. Man, uh, again, this would be like a I'm going to move it down. I'm going to move it down plus. to B. Yeah. An A plus, you think so? It's really, it's so easy. It's just like, it's just like the next iteration. You know what I mean? Just a, just slight, just sprinkle some avionics on there. You, you have like the data link. It does it on its own. You know, you have to learn how to go to BVR modes and different acm modes but all right maybe a b i don't I know. think it goes down to b because of that there's a little bit more spice on it but not yeah, much yeah i think it goes down to b i'm gonna move it down to b you guys good with that yeah, yeah. all right moving other stuff around because i can tell we're gonna run out of room here i might have to well, expand this 27 right next to that because yeah, it's, it's the same plane yeah. right but it's yeah. in a different category maybe it shouldn't be um mig 21 i think the mig 21 goes down to like as much as i love the mig 21 I think it's a pain in the ass to fly. It's a pain in the ass to taxi. It's a pain in the ass to learn to land. The systems are not very intuitive. I think it goes down there by uh, E for me. Yeah. What do you guys think? D or E. I mean, like it is a pain. It's, there's not a lot going on with it. You know what I mean? Like you're not getting a lot of sensory inputs. It's got one thing: guns or missile. It's super easy, but. You're right, dude. It, that thing will fucking leafy bug on you, you got, super quick. You got guns, the missiles, you got out. bombs, you got groms. Man, you got all sorts of stuff. It probably won't be a popular, but I'm going to go with F. It's either E or F. I think it's. I think landing the MiG-21, yeah, I think because out of, of all how the hard jets it is to land. listed here, the MiG-21 yeah. is the hardest. Yeah, I, I do okay. think it is a pilot's plane, like especially, you know, is, is a challenge, right? Not having a full of the Jeff, I don't know, but I would say the MiG-21 is definitely harder than the rest of those, for it's sure. It's definitely harder than the Jeff. It's definitely harder than all of these. You're right. So probably just go down here at the end here. It's an aircraft that I have flown quite a bit, and I've taken a break from for a few months, and I can't fly it now because I don't fucking remember how yeah, to do it. It's tough, man. <laughs> like, it's tough. For, for a beginner, someone brand new to the MiG-21. Yeah, hard. What would they know how to do? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Like, nothing. Windows Home. That's what I'm, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you start it up, like... Taxiing the thing is a pain in the ass because yeah. you have the pneumatic brakes. Taking mm -hmm. off yeah. um, is okay. But the other thing <laughs> that you have to learn is you have to flip the stupid switch up to, in order to move the gear up. Oh, and yeah. then if you don't put yep. the gear back to the neutral position, you then you don't have any yeah, freaking pneumatic your, pressure yeah, for your yeah. brakes. Yeah, it does, it does <laughs> so, return to be right by the Spitfire because of that stupid fucking pneumatic braking I, shit. I think heavy so, metal... Heavy metal, I think the thing you're not remembering is this is for somebody who's never played before. The first time in the DCS, they, they've not played a bunch of flight sims. It is not easy to use the brakes. It's not intuitive to use the brakes to turn the nose wheel. It is not intuitive to flip 35 switches to start the plane. <laughs> it, it is... I, I agree with you. I fucking love the MiG-21. I think it's one of my favorite modules in DCS. It's definitely in my top three. That said, oh. it is a pain in the ass. Um, oh, oh, Dunraven says you have to think in Russian. So you do. there's that. You do. <laughs> but I think even Russians probably could start the planes above it and fly them easier than the MiG-21. Mm -hmm. If they this never played why, a flight sim before. This is why they had the North Koreans flying dcs so they could figure out what the fuck was going on with their own jets yeah all right so i'm gonna make the okay so now we're in the kind of fighter tier and i know there's some crossover with the j11 um and maybe there shouldn't be but i guess i might have messed that up maybe maybe this goes over in the other category um but i think that just to kind of maybe, maybe i will move it over i think the j11 the su27 the uh su33 all go on the same tier what do you guys think the only thing I'll throw out for the SU-33 is it can land on a boat. Yep. And it can air to air refuel. That's true. We'll move it down because of that. Some extra stuff to learn. Mm-hmm. 
Um, oh, it's pretty easy to fly, though. It is it easy is. to fly. No, no. Yeah, and the systems are the same as the Su twenty seven, but there is some extra stuff you got to learn how to do. Um, I would say taking off from that boat in the Su thirty three the very first time was not easy. And I'll give you this: you have more weapons, but you're way heavier. So if you way get a heavier. turn in that thing, it's a more different fuel. story. More yeah, fuel as different well. Story. Um, what about the the Mig twenty nine variants? I don't know the difference between them. I never fly them. <clears throat> I think there's three of them, right? The A, the G, and the C. And the, S. the S. Is there four? Or is the C I and S? I think I think there's an S. I don't remember a C. Yeah, maybe the C is the S. Maybe I messed that up. A G S. I think I messed I that up. I don't remember. I'll have to fix that in the final copy. Maybe because that means it belongs in the S tier. Ooh. I'm seeing A and S. I'm a and, seeing a. a and S. G and G is the same. Okay, my bad. My bad. I was looking at the the different models. Like they all look different in in DCS. That's why I brought all three. Okay, so A and S, yeah, A and S. All right, so we'll do A and C, and I'll get rid of the G. Okay. But this is an S. What do you guys think? What do you think? Where do you think those go? Those are all fairly simple, right? They don't have. Uh, do they have bombs? One, one's an attack plane, isn't it? Maybe that goes over yeah, here. Yeah, one, one is an attack plane. I'll stick that over here in the multi roll. So maybe it goes into B because because of everything else. I don't fly it enough to. Yeah, it's put it out call. there, but it's a flaming, it's a flaming cliff three yeah, module, so it's just like A or B, just because of that. That's, that's kind of yeah. why I wanted to get rid of these flaming cliffs modules real quick here. Yeah, those are all kind of together. Yeah. A fifteen S tier, <sighs> because I think it, I think it might, I think it might. It's so easy. It's the first plane I ever learned. Well, Moose gave a sigh. Uh oh, what's the sigh? again? It's like it's just difficult because we're talking about the whole package, man. The F-15 and the A-10 were the first two aircraft that flew in this game, right? So the A-10 was appreciating how to work systems, and the F-15 was appreciation of, like, what the fuck FCR is and RWR, and, like, when you're employing weapons, you're not having to worry about flipping switches now, Yep. but you're having to learn what you're looking at, right? So I don't think it's an S, simply because it is easy to fly. It's easy to shoot missiles, but, like, when you look down at that FCR and RWR, that that's, might as well be another language to somebody that's never played before. That's my two cents. So you think it goes in A? S plus or A? Super easy, but S just, be, a plus. just because every single one of these aircraft were thinking right this there. is the first time we've flown anything. I don't, I, think we're any, I don't think we're having any S. Planes. I don't think we're, we're going to have any S's, but I think that's fine. It's, it's, it's the, this is going to be the very seldomly used. It doesn't have the to be S, there. The S plane would be like that. What's that biplane that they came out with? The, the CE2? The... Shit. Christian Eagle? Yes. Christian Eagle, man. Christian Eagle. Who put Eagle? that in the B, cat category. That in the B category? Oh, did you? I missed it. because it was a tail, tail dragger. Oh, okay. Anyways. I'm going to fix this real fast. Sorry. All right. So we'll stick the F-15 in the... In the A What was that plane they came out with that they were going to... Yeah, the 101. You guys put that at D? Yeah, yeah, that thing's a pain in the ass. It is, but it's easy to fly. It's easy to fly, but there's engine management. The startup sucks. Uh, you can blow the engine super easy. It doesn't have a lot of power, so it falls out of the sky if you're not doing the right thing. Like, from a <laughs> beginner's standpoint, that thing is garbage. All right. So I don't want to be the, the guy that keeps us out of S tier. Because I'm, I'm going to admit, F-15 is super easy. So... I mean, do you guys agree that it's not? Do you think the F-15 is the easiest out of all of them? <laughs> if I it do. Is, then it deserves I, do. I think the F-15 I learned super quick coming into DCS. I, it's the first thing I bought as a fighter, and I was all about it. And I learned it. It was my bread and butter. That's all I flew. I learned it super fast. I kind of think I might be overthinking it. I think I might give it an S vote. I think I think it goes an S, but but I'm happy to. It's bend. super easy just to do an instant action mission and you know like almost exactly what to do. Like the like, radar management is probably the hardest thing and people don't understand that because their elevation's wrong. And that's probably the only thing I didn't understand. Like the RWR, it fucking tells you what the target is and it tells you and, and like I get that the threat rings are a threat ring, but to the new person they're gonna think it's distance, which is almost the same technically. Um 
I think that it's just super intuitive. Like the RWR, yeah. if you're talking SPO versus RWR, RWR wins every single time. I guess if we go back to what I said earlier of like RWR and FCR is going to be something for all fighters. With that being said, definitely F15 is the easiest one out of all of them. I, I think I think it goes in the S tier. That's just me. But And I think it's okay if this is controversial. I think so if better. the F15 goes in the S tier, do we really think the SU27 is two tiers below that? Because it's like... I think the SU27 is, is a bit harder to learn because of the RWR. Uh, you have extra and, and munitions have to learn to employ. You have to rockets. EO you have, the, yeah. So it definitely... And you have EO versus uh radar and then you have to know that when you're in eo it's not gonna iff automatically hence how i shot you down um true you know i think there's a little bit more to it so yeah i, I don't mind that it's two levels below i'm happy with that then that looks good to weld me. says just... f15 is s or i'll ban all your viewers and he is a mod i gotta kind of take him seriously <laughs> on this it's just it's super easy to fly it's i think it's super easy to fly yep um, i think so too i think so too and i think i think to best to, radar best rwr yeah and I think to Lumberhack's point about want, really wanting this SU-25A in the S tier, I think it's harder to fly than the F-15, which puts it down here. So, case closed. Um, I think we have our first S tier. I think we do. I think we do, and I like it. All right, so let's do uh, MiG-15. So, MiG-15, you have the free caster wheel you have to fucking deal with, so that puts it down for me. Taxing sucks. The startup is kind of annoying because you can't... Um, you have to you have to increase the engine fuel or rpm or whatever it is by by listening to it you can't just pull fucking handles and switches uh so it's a bit it's a bit of a pain in the ass to start up it's a bit of a pain in the ass to taxi takes off fairly well you again you have that weird gear handle that you have to flip back to center um it doesn't roll very well and you have to use a lot of rudder while you're flying it landing's all right and then you don't have much to do but shoot but again that's that's kind of the World War II style where you just do high deflection shots. And with a MiG-15, do we get back into the territory of hard pull, hard wobble kind of situation? Yeah, that's what I was kind of saying about having to use rudder. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's this not, one's, it's, it's, it's not super think, hard, but I don't think it goes above C for me. Yeah, I think D is good because it's not as hard as the mig 21 the systems aren't as advanced um and i think it flies very well the mig 15 yeah i think, you know, it, I, you know, I think, I think it flies I think the hardest well. part is using the guns like you were talking about yeah but i also think it does because of the roll rate if you need extra roll you have to use rudder and i think that's not a common concept to people where if you use rudder and add aoa to a plane it typically will roll that's not something people understand to begin with right true so it's kind of a Plus, people that are brand new. I think another thing we haven't really been thinking about is if you're brand new and you're a beginner, what kind of HOTAS system are you going to have? Are you going to have a HOTAS with a twistable oh, rudder? God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that we was, kind of, that was kind of actually brought up when we were doing the World War II stuff. Is like new people oh, aren't going to okay. have a rudder. Um, I so I kind of, I kind of thought of that. I didn't say it, but yeah, you're right. You're right. I think, I think That's for the purposes of the way this is laid out, we have to assume that people have HOTAS and rudders, like because if not, then it's going to be like. Every Another category. World War II shit yeah. goes to trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, what were you going to say? I was going to say Xbox controller or the Microsoft freaking flight stick with yeah. the twist. You can have the twist. You can do decent like with the twist. It just takes some. Bucks. Yeah, it just takes some work, right? Easiest modules for keyboard and mouse. <laughs> go. We'll spend another uh, three hours and they all go to fucking that. trash yeah, here. Easiest. Combined arms. Yeah. <laughs> That's the easiest module. FC three ends up in S tier and everything else ends up in the trash. All right. All right. What's next? Next is the MiG-19. I think the MiG-19 goes probably right where the MiG-15 is. I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of stick time with it though. Never flown it. I know that when it first came out, it was kind of a weird flight model. It had some weird quirks. You could like get up to fifty thousand feet and it would just keep climbing no matter what. Um, but I think they fixed all that now. Yeah, when it first came out, it had a lot of issues. Um. Man, that's a tough one because it's like, definitely got a better roll diff- rate. It does. It's got a better engine. You have afterburner, so you 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 aren't limited to speed as much. You can increase your speed a little bit faster. Uh, 
does it have the free caster wheel? Do you have to use the brakes? I would assume so. It seems like you have to do that in most yeah, of these aircraft. Yeah, like the same thing, yeah. So that's a little bit tough on a new person. Um, taking off seemed simple enough. Landing seems relatively simple. I just, I feel like it should be under the MiG-15. Okay. Just, and I think it's a little bit, diff I think it's more difficult to fly the MiG-19 compared to the 15. And because you got to be more aware of your speeds and also the guns are different. So there's like radar assisted gun, you know, the manual gun. Yeah. Uh, the missiles. Yeah, oh, man, there's there's quite a few things. And like if you go to burner, you have to press a button in order to like light the burner. Like ignite it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll so, defer to you because I think you've flown it more than I have. I, I, I think it's a little bit harder to fly than Big 15, but... It's, I think it's easier to take off and land compared to the MiG-21. Okay, I agree with that. All right, let's move on to the Mirage. The well, Mirage. I think that... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say the F-86 is probably the closest category to what we're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, right let's move right. that one. Good idea. So I think the F-86 is easier to handle, easier to, excuse me, take off, land, maneuver than the MiG-15. The gun sight is a radar gun sight, so it takes a little bit of effort to get that going. You don't have to use it, I guess, but. But it's really not too difficult. It's really not that difficult. I think I think is in terms of just usability, the F-86 is better than the MiG-15 for me. I mean, I've, flown, I've flown the F-86 a lot, and I think the, the startup is a lot simpler than the MiG-15. Uh, it does have a free caster wheel. Uh, it takes off super easy. It flies very easy. The only thing that the F-86 sucks at is if you get over like 500 miles per hour, I forgot what it is, but, you know, the ailerons don't work anymore. And then you got to use the rudder, you know. Like, the transonic state really yeah. fucks it out. And landing, getting all the speed off the airplane when you're landing, that is tough in that thing. Yeah, because the, the gear extension speed is so, so, so low. low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it moves the, down for a notch for that. Does the MiG-15 have... Uh, a decreased visibility range versus the F-86 canopy wise. I, I know that's weird, but I'm talking about like it for does, SA, yeah. like, yeah. And you have to, you have to raise the seat, right. To land it or take off or whatever. Oh, when you land and take off the seat raises on its own. Yeah. Nose I still will... think, I still think the F-86 is very simple. Like not, not a category simple, but I think it's, I think it's pretty simple. I like how chat this entire time, even though we've been doing this for two hours now, is 100% using their bias on how much they like the plane versus like what we're trying to accomplish here. <laughs> <laughs> like they're still like, oh, this fucking F-86 is A tier. That's my favorite I did, plane. Yeah. <laughs> I did see a lot of back and forth about the F-15 though. <laughs> I did. I did. It's still going. It's oh. still going. Yeah. This is the 86 is, I think it's easy. I, yeah, I, I had it You're before somebody. I had the MiG-15 and I thought it was easier to learn than the MiG-15 for sure. And it's super simple to fly. Yep. Yep. It just, I think and the like, landing is the hardest part about the flying. Easy to take off, easy to fly. I think, landing I think the landing is pretty easy for me. Getting the airspeed um, always threw me, though. Getting that airspeed off that airframe always threw me. Yeah. But air to air wise, F 86, super easy for gun like employment compared yeah. to the. MiG-15. Yeah, the MiG-15 takes some work because there's no there's no radar just, sight. There's just not a lot of systems on it, so I think C is very fair. Okay. Yeah. Go with C. All right, the Mirage 2000C. So now, I think to take into consideration here is... Uh, <laughs> well, you saw what happened, you saw what happened to me earlier. A lot of negative training going on with this one. <laughs> yeah. So the Mirage 2000C is not the same Mirage 2000C I know in my head right now. It has changed in the last few updates uh, a mm. lot. We have the INS. the INS now has to be aligned properly, which is different than it used to be, which for a new person, not really a problem. So don't think we can take that into consideration as far as like how much different it is, but, but it is a process. Uh, the RWR uh, is not easy. Symbols. Uh, it's all symbols instead of letters and numbers. Um, the, the INS drift which throws a lot of people. So like air to ground deployment is a pain in the ass because of it. Um, even though most people don't really use it for that. Um, 
what else is there it's a great it's easy to take off it's easy to maneuver in the air i would say it's harder than most planes to land just because you can tail strike it real easy and you have to come in at such a high aoa mm -hmm. um i think it's like 14 degrees aoa um or units or whatever they're using i think it's degrees 69 french units 69 french units of aoa yeah yeah so i i think this is definitely like a c or maybe a d tier for me i know that that's gonna really piss a lot of people off but for a new from a new person's perspective there's a lot to learn on this i'd say it's definitely harder than the f-16 but i'm yeah. gonna go e i'm gonna go e because oh man like it's the f-18 is easier to learn than the mirage i think in the current state of the mirage oh yeah that's a so, good but point is it, but is that because of your wrapped around those systems in your head versus the way the mirage is made i mean you could be right uh but I think it poses the question: If your if your delivery? weapon delivery is fairly simple, you, you're either air to ground or you're or you're either one of the two missiles are selected or your gun. The gun sight's hot trash, but um, the bombs are fairly simple. Like you literally type in the point you want a bomb and CCRP it in. But yeah. but then again, you have INS drift, which is not a thing modeled in a lot of planes to this degree, right? So like it drifts really fast. Yeah, but well, the F-18 and the F-16 have GPS. Yeah, true. Um, yep. But the Mirage doesn't have data link. There's no helmet-mounted display. Yep. So you don't have the sensory overload. Right. You have the lack thereof. The lack thereof. Um, but I mean, you said it's easy to fly, it's easy to deploy weapons, even though it's good or bad, it's easy for somebody to get in and rolling in it. For the most That's part. For the most part, I would say the air to ground stuff is not super easy, but the air to air stuff is. So let's just let's just back it up because it's we've been all thrown for a loop based on the new update. So the Mirage as it was, assume that it was as easy to learn then as it is now. When you learned it, how yeah, hard was it? It wasn't because I don't bad. fly it. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that bad. Um, so maybe for a new person, it wouldn't be that bad because they're coming in from a fresh perspective instead of a ne negative training aspect. Yeah, like w would we think that it'd be harder than f-18 is in the sense of the the jeff or is it on the same tier as the f-18 just a different kind of system you know it's a different d different d oh, oh that's uh, a good uh, point uh, that's a good point well man we should have done that from the beginning all right next stream when we do this we're going to do that every time we're talking about a new plane we're going to pull chat and see where they come in at man that would have been good to start with sorry it's all good i i think no, this i think this is a d or an e for me it's it's a good point though, Moose, because I'm coming at it with the perspective of like what the Mirage used to be. Yeah, like it was my favorite air to air module. It was so simple. <laughs> um, but now like I guess it's because I'm trying Started. to relearn the new way. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a solid like I don't know. It's just a it's a different change, and I don't know if it's a good change. <laughs> Yeah, embrace the change. I know, right? But, yeah. no, no choice. <laughs> Maybe this goes up at. Ah, it's hard to put it at these levels, though. I think it goes up to C. There's not as much to learn as the F-18, so I think that moves it up for me. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have all the sensors and have TGP. It doesn't have all the extra stuff that this has. I think it goes to C for me. If I'm looking at it from a fresh perspective, as if my learning experience was exactly what somebody would get now, just because. There hasn't been a new additions of stuff. It's just the way that it's done is different now, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We good with C, C then? C for croissant? C for croissant. C. The M2000 croissant. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. So uh, I think whatever nice. happens here is we're going to stick wherever the B goes, the, Tr the trash 135 oh. goes below F. F. F fourteen is definite trash. F. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't fucking kill me. It's a great module, Jesus. but F, I already man. know. I already know it's gonna be. So you have different systems to learn. We gotta learn Jester, or you have to have a friend come in and do the Rio. That that immediately puts it down a notch for me. You uh, you got all the air to air stuff. The plane itself is kind of hard to fly, right? It's a, it's a pilot's plane. It is a pilot's plane. All right, so there's there's a there's a huge bias with the F14 and it's a huge nostalgia thing. 
Yeah, and like, we're gonna forget that. People love the F fourteen just to, as a Top Gun. Well, okay, and and I get well, let's it, let's but... start over. So Tom Cruise flew this in Top Gun, so it goes to trash. <laughs> right, it's the trash tier immediately because he flew it. I'm jumping on the couch oh, right now because oh, the trash. <laughs> Dude, it, it's learning this is is difficult. everybody forget the fact that this plane came from Top Gun. I might be an idiot, right? But I fucking smashed the abort button. I love Top Gun. But when I started watching streams on people fucking doing shit in this thing, I was like, no, nope, I this, can't do The F-14 is tough, man. It's a, not an easy plane. There's a lot to learn, especially because you have to manage two seats if you're playing single player. True. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I fly this a lot and I still have issues with Jester. Like, I think I can solve a lot of your issues with Jester, by the way. And I think it's... Uh, it's, it has to do around well there's some issues he does he does that are stupid but i think a lot of people have the issue where they try to lock the target ahead or the bandit ahead and he says unable or no that, yes. is that a problem you have all the time uh yes exactly so you have to look at the iff cue on it if it is a bandit you can say bandit ahead if it is not then you have to say target just saying i have, look at this look at I've this way man that issue many times just from watching streams, right? Never having flown the F-14 ever. Like, I don't even own the module. But just watching streams, if I was a new person and I'm sitting in that pilot seat and and Jester is like, Bandit, 3 o'clock, missile line. You know, like, I'm just freaking the fuck out. You know, to rip the rings off that thing every time, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Because your essay is zero when you yeah. first start. So, Pixie says F-14B, easy F-14A, more difficult. I mean, yes, that is true. That, but that's 100% true. A, a brand new person, I'm going f leaning towards trash and i hate to say that because it's the f-14 and i love the f-14 but as someone brand brand new coming in just the rio perspective gesture perspective i think that puts it to a whole new level i think that i have to put the the f-14a as an f simply because we don't have something in between the and the b needs to go above it because there's there's engine management, you have to be careful with your AOA. You have to know what you're doing in the A, but it's not trash. I, I'm not gonna say it's trash. It's just it's difficult. Do they but go next to each other then? I think you have to put them next to each other because the systems are the same. The only thing that's diff different is the engines. Yeah, but the, it makes it more difficult. It, it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> you still gotta interact with jester i don't yeah, think it deserves another tier it's not enough tier, not enough engines. difference for the tier okay and again if we step back a little bit somebody start picking one to start with they're not going to know the difference like they're just gonna yeah that's true the f14 okay. is it, it's a challenge and then for someone to say that it belongs in the s tier that's just like they're their again, childhood dream coming true right now yeah, not it, a yeah. value assessment this is, you gotta remember this is the category of easiest modules to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had a friend that you wanted to get hooked on DCS, what's the aircraft you would tell them to fly to learn? It would not be the F-14. No, it wouldn't I think, be. I, th I hear most people ask questions. It's on the F-14. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I get the most. I mean, granted, a lot of my content is geared towards the F-14 because I had the ability to make all of that stuff when it came out but i get a lot of people saying you know oh my god this plane was hard to learn and thanks thanks for your videos because because it really helped me and and i would imagine that if that didn't exist they would have fucking said fuck this thing yeah the the content creators have saved the community a oh, fucking ass pain dude because there's so many things that come up and now you can search and plenty of people have put out tutorials yes i agree so looking back at this, someone keeps writing in chat where we put a full fidelity module in S tier right now. Is there any is there any in here right now that you would want to I think full fidelity argue immediately says the that F5. it's not Yeah, I think the closest thing would be the F five. If you were to do any of them, it would hundred percent be the F five. Yeah. I agree. Maybe the L thirty nine. I think the L-39 is maybe, uh, maybe. And not having flown the L-39, I would say the F-5 could make it to S-tier as full fidelity because a beginner would get in it and be able to fly it 
and not get frustrated and keep like the stick to itiveness to be like, okay, it's fun to fly. Let's actually learn how to like do things and other aircraft, man, they'll fucking put you in the ground quick and you'll just yeah. quit. Yep. I still so, think the F5 is, deserves S tier for easiest. I think if you're rating them all against themselves, against each other, yes. But I think you got to rate them against where they are, right? The L39 uh, heavy metal makes a good point. The taxiing makes it a non S tier because it's a pain in the ass taxi because you have to use the, the brakes. If we compare the F5 to the F15 based on auto start, <clears throat> I think the F5 would make S tier for sure. I think Pixie's just thrown out Pixies. crap. Pixie's a, a, a bastard. He comes from Torny Stream. That's where I know him from, and so oh, everybody. He's just thrown out a bunch of. He's just thrown out a bunch. Everybody of crap. that comes from there is a, a cunt. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think one of the questions in chat is why is the uh, Huey in B tier, and I think uh, you know you probably missed it, but of all of of all of the helicopters, this one's pretty damn easy. The hardest thing about it is hovering. Systems wise, there's no systems. Yeah. Yeah, with with, with the Huey, you are learning the physics of helicopter flight. That's that's what makes it a B tier aircraft. Yeah, yeah, because you're dealing with all the stuff because it is really well modeled on what happens in real life. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, guys. I think we did. I think we did a solid one here. I can't wait to see what everybody else thinks. Besides <laughs> the people that have been voicing their opinion already, because I don't care about them. They're gonna love it with the F-14 and the F tier. This oh, easy man. list is not easy, and I think it's going to end up in the trash. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna love it when everybody takes this list out of context and doesn't watch the stream recap. Oh, for sure, you're gonna get sued by Polychop for putting the fucking gazelle in F tier. Like, I'm it's gonna get sued by everybody. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. This is a value thing, and somebody's gonna tell you that because of the four of us, somebody didn't buy a module. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we said it was trash, yeah. like. Yeah. Well, good. Good. I don't know if, this is, I don't know if this is the right one, but good. Oh. Good. Good. I took mine. I took mine off. Yeah. Tell him that. Hey. Didn't buy a module because we made a tier list and it was in the F or trash tier. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm I think, happy with I it. I think man. I'm happy with it, and uh, I think we'll ship it. Everyone, so keeps we, question, everyone keeps questioning the gazelle. So just to summarize it, can well, we what, do the easiest for every category? So the easiest for the first category would be the L39. What's that category called? Is trainers. Yeah, we can hear. Well, let's uh, let's enhance. 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 We'll just do this. So we'll do trainers. Then we got helicopters. Something like that. Yeah. Hey, guys, I got to drop off. Thanks, right. for Thanks for hanging out, man. All right. Thanks for the later. inputs. Thanks for your, your valued opinion. Yeah. <laughs> we love Four you a long time. Dose. Latest. We got, uh, what was this, Strike? Yeah, we put we put the gazelle down there because if you're a brand new helicopter pilot, like there's a lot of stuff you have to learn. Yeah, about the gazelle's flight model and even to perfect your key bindings and like not key bindings, but your curves and everything just to get it to fly correctly. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a lot. And then having to switch to second seat to employ weapons and yeah, if it works. True. We're not saying you shouldn't buy the module. If yeah, posed, just... if posed the question, I am a new person just getting into DCS. What module should I start out with? What's the easiest? What's the yeah. easiest module to start out with? The answer is this list. We believe. We believe the answer is this list. It's not. It's not anything but that, guys. I think we. I think we did really well because I feel like this is just. Super, super controversial. And I think that that's what I was going for. It is. Yeah. People are going to hate everything about it. Yep. I agree. Mm -hmm. Which is great. 
You should definitely post this to Reddit. Yeah. Oh, Reddit's going to love it. <laughs> Reddit's going to have a fucking heart attack. F15 is S tier, and that's the only S tier? What about my vegan? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So you're telling me someone can fly this one better than this? Well, thanks for putting that together. That was I know that was probably a lot of work. Yeah, it was, but it was totally worth it. This was a lot of fun. I highly yes, enjoyed you. the conversation. Thanks for letting me join, because you don't have a choice. I didn't. You were coming no matter what. That's what she said. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. Cool. I think we're good. I'll uh, I'll tidy this up a bit, and then uh, if you guys are just tuning in or you didn't make it and you're watching the the vod, um, we'll end up putting this up on YouTube. I'll, it'll be on my channel, and uh, we'll post it to various places. And and uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. I think uh, I think this worked out well, and we're gonna do another one in the future. Um, we'll do one on like best air to air or best dogfight or something super controversial where nobody agrees i think that'll be the best um i think it'll be the best list we'll do uh most re most regrettable purchase mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I've, only regretted, I've only regretted one purchase i'm yeah. not gonna say what it is though what is it no you gotta say it now you have to it's say in it. the f it's in the f category oh yeah yeah <laughs> and there's I'm three pictures of it <laughs> <laughs> I've I've regretted um, I've re in, in this current list that you see before you. I've regretted no purchases. The only purchase I've actually regretted is the hawk, but you can't get that anymore. So, <laughs> combined arms? Nope. Combined arms? Don't care. It's not really. This is this is for plane modules. Combined arms is like an extra thing. Hey, but there are some people that do enjoy the modules that we do have. Yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy any of these modules. Yeah. If you're looking yeah, for something to that. start out with that is a pain in the ass, definitely start from C down. Honestly, I'll go as far as saying you should probably fucking get them all and try all of them because they're all fun, Yeah, but just not yeah. all easy. They're not all easy. This is the easiest modules tier list. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, can we? Uh, go ahead. Well, before we go, can yeah, we do? Com can we do combined arms with every single? <laughs> you gonna do it? Combined arms every with single every unit. single one of the units in it. The only right. unit Jesus. I care about is the G unit. <laughs> nice. I like it. All right. Next is uh, terrain. <laughs> There's like four of them. There's six yeah. now, I guess. Best best terrain to buy. And then the next one's going to be aircraft carriers. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a two hour video. A two hour video where we just move the super carrier into a specific slot. That, the Stennis and the. Uh, oh, yeah. What's the, yeah. What's the Russian one called? <laughs> the Kuzinov. The Kuzinov. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. Appreciate it. We're definitely going to have to yeah. do this again. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Thanks, Jabbers. Yep. See you guys later.